Yeah, good morning, ladies and gentlemen, dear colleague. Welcome to this fourth international workshop and on bovine laparoscopy and bovine repositioning of the placed abomasum, which was again organized by Dr. Fritz and the Skill Animal Care Company together with our clinic. Um, my name is Rolf Fritz from Dr. Fritz GmbH in Kipling in Germany. I also would like to welcome you today. And uh, I just want to remind you that it's not so easy to hold a practical workshop like this. Therefore, I'm very thankful towards the university, especially Professor Doll, who just uh, made the introduction, and his team, which is sitting here in the front. So thank you very much. And uh, most people do not know how much effort it is and uh, how long time it needs to be prepared. And so this is the place for our uh, every year annual workshop on bovine laparoscopy. And we are really happy to be here every year since now 10 or 12 years. It's the 14th workshop in total. And uh, so we are very happy. I also like to introduce um, our partner company, which with uh, the name Skill Animal Care. Skill Animal Care is since two and a half years our exclusive distributor on this section of endoscopy uh, over Europe, United States, and also in the small <coughs> animal section. So uh, please have a look to them with all three Vet ladies on top of this uh, uh, line in this hall, Frau Dr. Schmölzer, Frau Dr. Sarka and Frau Anne Hölscher, Frau Dr. Anne Hölscher. All of them are experts in endoscopy and they are located all over Germany at least and uh, not in Belgium. And we also have in the Netherlands, we have also a guest here, which is the company Vetin Akofama, with uh, his uh, head of the department, it's Kohn Soli. And for Netherlands, from Belgium, do we have somebody here as a guest? No? Okay. Um, so, this is my little introduction. And I would like to forward to Heinz Janowitz, the first speaker, the inventor of the procedure in total. And without him, nothing would, be, would have been happened. So thank you very much for this. And we like to start. Yeah, good morning, dear colleagues. Uh, thank you, Professor Doll, for your nice introduction. Uh, thank you, Rolf and Skill and the whole WET team of the university for the organization of this day. Uh, I think we will uh, need them later <laughs> if we go to the practice part. We have uh, some cows. We later can, um, can uh, perform some surgeries. So today we will... Um, what will we do today? The laparoscopic abomasopexy we will do. So no omentopexy, but the abomasopexy of the different conditions of displacement of the abomasum. So we will fix the left displaced abomasum, the not or non-displaced abomasum, and perhaps a right displaced abomasum. Of course, I will show you the different conditions of right abomasal displacement and the conditions how to um, perform this. Bovine endoscopy. Endoscopy is very popular in human <coughs> medicine and in horse and pet medicine. In bovine practice, we see bovine endoscopy only in cases of teeth problems and in the last years more and more in laparoscopy and not only to uh, to get some diagnosis, so we have the possibility to, to take um, a surgery technique. 
1996, we, we developed this uh, laparoscopic technique in, in our practice in northwestern Germany. And 1997, there was the first workshop, and then it followed publications. And uh, the technique established in Germany, Italy, Netherlands, and some other countries. And 2004, we had a revolution, the bean of the one-step method um, performed by Christiansen here in Germany and Barisani in Italy. But this part, the one-stop method, we will see later in a second section with my dear friend Evert from Leuven. <coughs> to, be, to the begin, the surgical technique is very easy to learn and is very interesting and the results in practice are so successful that the farmers like and prefer this method. And um, we had the problem that the acceptance of laparotomy was low by the farmers because of costs and the antibiotics, loss of milk money, and postoperative treatment, sometimes complications. And um, so farmers wanted another method, another surgery. And so a lot of farmers and vets started with a method by Stelma and Grümer. And we in our practice too, but we had a lot of disadvantages with the method of Selma and Grimmer, and the results were sometimes good, sometimes bad. And we, we tried to, to perform another, to, to be better uh, than this method. Um, the incidence of, of apomasal displacement is different in the different countries. We see a high incidence of um, displacement in the USA and Canada and of course we have a, a great influence of the situation in Germany because of the semen import and our breeding programs uh, with the <coughs> Holstein Friesian cows. We have uh, only an incidence from 1% perhaps in, in the Netherlands. In Germany, in our region, we have an incidence of 2 to 3%, not so high like the USA because we have other feeding systems and it's important um, feeding transit period, uh, feed intake in the post-calving period, this situation is very important for the incidence of, of DA. And uh, high yield milk is, is not the, the question, uh, is, is not the, the problem. We have herds with, with, with very high yield milk cows with low incidence and herds with only 8,000 liter milk and they average and they have a high rate of displaced abomasum. So it's, it's a, it is of course a management disease. Uh, advantages of a mentopexy of the right flank. You, we all, the most of us uh, had this um, technique in our study in Hanover or Munich or in, in, in Europe. Okay, it's, we have some advantages. We see what we do. We can fix the left and right displaced abomasum and uh, we have a high therapeutic safety. But we have some disadvantages. The low acceptance, the costs of laparotomy, postoperative treatment, antibiotics and slaughtering is impossible if the cow has a bad recovery. <coughs> And today it's so farmers don't like any extra work. So the toggle pin or roll and suture method from Steiner and Gruner become more and more popular in not only in the USA, but in Germany and the Netherlands and other countries in Europe too. Um, a very interesting method, but not only with advantages, disadvantages too. Okay, the time for this method, only 20 minutes, is a lot of cheaper, perhaps 50 euro different. The cows go back to the herd at once and we give no antibiotics in Germany. In USA, mostly they give antibiotics. But disadvantages, the operation can't be far if the aphomasum is not displaced and it has to be interrupted if the aphomasum can't be identified if the cow is laying on its back, of course. And it's possible to fix the twisted abomasum in cases of RDA, 
but sometimes in LEA too. So we have a low therapeutic safety, false fixations, stenosis, pelosis, obstruction, injuries of other abdominal structures are possible. And um, here's a, in this picture you can see a, a study from Sterner and Grümer, uh, published 2008, and they had a success rate with the Roland Suture method only from 75%, you see the two month survival rate from 75% and I think it's, um, it's very low and uh, they showed and you can see the Roland Suture was performed by veterinarians around about 300 cases and herd personnel 400 persons, you see it is in the, especially in the USA, it is a method of the herd manager and the farm personnel and in Germany it started too that farmers begin to roll and tax their cows themselves and this uh, situation we will not have in our practice and um, the bad results here in laparotomy we can't uh, uh, explain but uh, because other studies show better results worldwide These are results from, in comparison between Sterner and Jean-Philippe Roy from the University of Montreal. He, you can see the survival two months rate. Um, 75% role in suture. And you see endoscopy, 91% laparotomy, 88% are the similar scopy, endoscopy and laparotomy in Montreal and I think with this, uh, these are correct uh, dates you can work with. So if you see the costs, you will uh, take a new hafer in your herd, you see we have costs from 1,400, 1,500 euro, a HIFA in USA, uh, if you will uh, buy a HIFA you have to pay $3,000, in Germany uh, at time 1,600 uh, euro for a good HIFA, so I think it, it's of course necessary to choose a very safe procedure for your economic benefit. And now I will short uh, tell you the advantages and sometimes uh, the difficulty of the procedure of Sterner and Grimmer. We look here from the back and we see a good filled rumen, a gas filled abomasum, dilatated and dislocated and now we take the procedure from Sterner and Grimmer. We lay the cow on the right side, bring her in dorsal recumbency and turn her half right and here we can hear the ping and it's no problem to fix the abomasum in the correct position. Yeah. This is no problem to fix it in this cow. But now we have a second cow and we have a, if, we, if we hear with our, with our fan on the scope we have a similar situation. We have a good filled rumen and we have a, a clear ping of the abomasum but we have the abomasum half filled with, filled with fluid and now we bring the cow on the right side down in dorsal recumbency, half right and what will we see? The abomasum turned not back to the right side, it's still on the left side and if we fix the abomasum in this condition it's a wrong uh, fixation with problems after the surgery. To, to be successful, we, would, uh, we have to turn the, the cow sometimes and then we have to, to bring the abomasum in this position. But it's very difficult to side it from outside the cow if we have, we have no chance to, to decide is the abomasum still on the left side or correct on the right side. And this is the reason for the disadvantages of the method with Stan and Grimmer in, in often in cows and these are cows that begin uh, with a slow feed intake after the operation 
and uh, more and more um, signs of peritonitis often because we have often a lot of tension on the thread ends and, um, and that is that's a disorder. Okay, this is a cow, um, per, mostly cows with after the third or lactation or more and we see a very strong dilated abomasum. We are hearing the ping all over the abdominal wall and it's very difficult to say in which position may I fix the abomasum, what is the correct position to do this. Uh, especially in cows with a very large abdomen, it's very difficult to perform this correct. And so I think these are the, the reasons for our different um, outcomes of role and suture procedures and this was a reason and our disadvantages performed us, this was a reason to start with endoscopy in our practice. So we have, we, if we do a laparotomy after Grümer on Sterner, we can see often trocarization and forged fixations in net, in rumen, in the paspilorica, in pores or intestinum and uh, already two to three days after the first surgery we often find hopeless peritonitis and um, farmers often do not calculate this risk and uh, in USA the antimicrobial therapy is uh, standard after Grümer on Sterma in Germany, in Germany mostly not but the, the outcome will survive rate from 75% I don't is not acceptable. The success of a laparotomy after a roll and suture procedure, this is an investigation from Perkins, he, he published of the AEBP proceedings 2003. Um, you see it's not very successful. Two months survival rate only 30, 30, uh, 40% if you do a laparotomy after a roll and suture method. Okay. This is my introduction in our program of the day. Now we will see um, short the surgical intervention in cattle in one year in our wet practice. And you see we have a lot of cases with LEA. We could perform in a one step or two step method, no problem. But mostly we perform our surgeries in our wet clinic. So the farmers come with a cow in our clinic and you see when they arrive in our clinic a lot of abomasums at time are not displaced. And with our two-step method we are able to fix the not displaced abomasum, 60 cases a year. Uh, we perform RDA laparoscopy. We have only, it's only necessary in, uh, in a year uh, by 10 cows to, to create, to do a laparotomy and sometimes it's interesting to do a lapros diagnostic laparoscopy. Okay, we start. In the beginning of every surgery um, we have to improve our method because uh, sometimes we have a dislocation of the abomasum in the morning and in the afternoon we will do the surgery and the abomasum is not displaced. So in the beginning please control your diagnosis. Now we will, if this is a position of the abomasum, we need two positions uh, in the abdomen to fix the Abomasum and the first is always to create a pneumo peritoneum. We prepare the cow, we, we shave the two positions behind the last rib and in the last or 11th intercostal space we disinfect these positions and we 
anesthetizes two positions to do their uh, to bring in later our toggles uh, our trocars to create a plumber peritoneum. We need only you see we only small, very small incisions are necessary and then we bring in directly a 5 mm trocar with the open tube here at the head and we remove the head of this trocar and in between a few seconds we have a passive in-stream of air and we have a fine um, periton pneumo peritoneum. Then we change the trocar system. We take the 8 mm trocar for our optical system. We first and we have the possibility to to insufflate air, especially in the beginning of phase of endoscopy, it's better to bring in a little gas to so we have a better view. And now we can insert our endoscope and have a view on the abomasum on the left side. We see the surface of the abomasum. Sometimes we have a fibrin and um, we perhaps there are adhesions of the abomasum with the abdominal wall and uh, we exclude and then we can bring in a toggle. Under endoscopic control we insert this toggle setting trocar. It's important to do this with under endoscopic control, not to, to, to hit the spleen. Here you see the spleen and it's very bleedy if we, if we puncture the spleen. And now you see here the, this part of the abomasum covered by net with its vessels and here this part the beginning of a gray surface and this directly this part in the top of the abomasum is a correct position to fix the abomasum to bring in the toggle into the lumen of the abomasum. And first we bring in the toggle and then we slowly release the gas completely. A short view of the instrument, instruments and in this box, I think you have later you can you can show the different instruments. So we work with this two magnetic valve trocars. The five we will begin with a five millimeter trocar with an open tube, and then the eight millimeter trocar for the laparoscope. We work with a stiff laparoscope and we have a light source. We have different light sources. We have the toggle setting trocar and this don't to bring in the, the thread end after <coughs> and uh, this safety toggle with a double thread 80 centimeters long with this mark to identify the position of the abomasum and we have this dissector to, to grip the thread ends in the abdominal cavity. <coughs> so the abomasum slowly deflates and now we remove the mandora and bring in the toggle into the loom. And now the abomasum is completely deflated 
now we can see the deflated abomasum and we bring in the thread end completely into the abdomen. Okay, this is the first part of the surgery and after this procedure we remove all our instruments. The cowry on this uh, on this wooden you, some farmers work with, with tractors to bring the cow in in the recumbency and everyone works with roll and tech method is, uh, is able to, to do is to, to bring a cow in, in the recumbency it's no problem. So we need now we need uh, two positions again one position for our optical system and one position for the fixation of the abomasum and the fixation point of the abomasum is 10 centimeters cranial on the right side of the umbilicus we shave disinfect and um, anesthetize these positions we need two half centimeter incisions and set in our trocar magnetic valve trocars it's no there's no risk to injure an, any organ or any structure in the abdomen because of the passive air in stream this is always enough uh, air in the, in the abdomen there's no risk to to injure anything Uh, it starts raining. <laughs> if we work without trailer, we mostly are standing on the right side of the cow. And now we, this is a picture on the, this, this video is performed on our operation trailer and here mostly we, sh we are standing on the left side of the cow so um, now we can identify the liver a very large liver here we see the diaphragm we see signs of peritonitis and we see perhaps um, fibrin or <coughs> bleedings and now we identify the thread end ah. <laughs> and take it and pull it out together with the trocar system so here you see we, we, we brought the cow into the barn better and now you, you see uh, the position of the optical system here on the right side too and the fixation point near the umbilicus if we work with a trailer we mostly standing on this left side of the cow and then we bring here our optical system here on the left side it's easy to work The position is uh, the, posi the fixation. The, to, the position to fix the abomasum is uh, one hand or ten centimeters cranial right the umbilicus. And now we we fix our thread ends, piercing a wound gas um, with a our double thread end and we we fix it without tensions we see the black mark on the thread ends to identify the, the position of the abomasum uh, to the abdominal wall
And this wound gas, we remove three weeks after the surgery. We need, I think we need three weeks. Um, and then we have a very strong adhesion from the abomasum to the abdominal wall. Now here you can see the umbilicus and the position of the, the fixation. <laughs> Now we turn the cow back on the right side and after only 40 milligram silicine, silicine they will, will stand up after a few minutes. I think when the cow is, is back on her legs, it's important to improve the tension of the wound guard. I think it's very important of the prognosis and the outcome. We, we need the wound guard here without tension on the thread ends for a good prognosis. Okay. Results under field conditions. Um, you see the laparoscopic service in our practice, uh, similar in the last years. And um, we can perform this surgery to 95% without complications. Uh, it's important to control the wound gas it should be without tension after bringing the cow back on her left. Please improve this. And we, we hope that to get only a local peritonitis and so it's better to check the temp body temperature for a few days and uh, the increase of the body, body temperature to 39.5 uh, degrees Celsius is possible. And, but it's important that the beginning of feed intake and rumination uh, begins within two days. If there is no feed intake and rumination within two days, you have to tell your farmers uh, you to do another examination. Um, perhaps it's the beginning of a peritonitis if they don't start to eat. Interoperative complications in the learning curve of the laparoscopic technique. I think uh, every technique you start with is uh, you have to learn and you will make some mistakes. Uh, it's difficult to, to give a cow xylazine in the beginning of the operation because you know after xylazine sometimes cows get a rumen tympani and uh, a tympanic rumen, you cannot bring in air into the abdomen, so and it's impossible to do a laparoscopy. So it's important to give the xylazine uh, short for the beginning to lay down the cow, not earlier. Um, sometimes it's possible to trochorize and insufflate the rumen. A subperitoneal insufflation is possible, a deflation of the abomasum um, in the beginning and the injury of the spleen. Sometimes injury of abdominal blood vessels is no, are no problems um, with the stitch or two stitches. You can uh, stop this problem. Um, thread and covered by net in dorsal recumbencing I think is never a problem. If you deflate the abomasum in the beginning phase, if you, you want to, to create a permanent peritoneum and you puncture the abomasum, then it's sometimes you deflate the abomasum and it sinks down. Uh, of, 
um, in these conditions, you have to fix the abomasum not displaced in dorsal recumbency. Complications. Sometimes we find local wound swellings as a fixation point or a temporary fistula of the abomasum. And, um, but every complications are very, not, not um, very often the pro problem I think is sometimes a peritonitis. And peritonitis starts if the wound gas is in very strong tension and then you get a necrosis of the abdominal wall, perhaps a toggle release, and uh, we perhaps get a general peritonitis and we have a few lateral cases a year. Relapse. The rate of relapse, I think, is um, between 2 or 3 percent. And if we do a relaparotomy in this cows, we, we find uh, different conditions. Sometimes we find the uh, abomasum without any adhesion. Uh, we have sometimes a relapse after injury of the cow, uh, sometimes after claw trimming. Um, and sometimes we see these adhesions very long and enlarged. Um, you see the abomasum sometimes half a meter enlarged and uh, mostly we see these cases in the following lactations. It's no problem to do a second surgery in the same way. So laparoscopic abomasopexy and antimicrobial therapy. Uh, our, in our cases, 20 to 30 percent of our cows get antibiotic drugs. Um, always in signs of beginning peritonitis, sometimes in cows with immune deficiency, longer illness, rumen acidosis, or increased body temperature. In the standing cow, we mostly see no signs of peritonitis, but we, if we bring the cow in dorsal recumbency, we sometimes see signs of peritonitis, so fibrin and um, increased body fluid. Abomasal displacement often is a secondary illness after a beginning in the post-calving period and so we, we find a lot of uh, accompanied disorders with abomasal displacement and it's important to to see this and these several disorders will be treated of course so we often find endometritis, purple sepsis, peritonitis, mastitis, diarrhea, laminis, and 65% uh, of cows with LDA uh, have several disorders. Summary to this section, um, LDA, laparoscopy surgery, is successful in more than 90%. We have a very quick increase in feed intake and milk yield. The relapse rate is in between 2 to 3 percent. Antimicrobial therapy in 20 to 30 percent. And we have a high acceptance in dairy business with this method. And it preserves veterinarian work because um, if we do this not in further future, farmers will pref um, perform their DAs with Roland Tech. Okay, um, if, if you start a new technique in, a, in, in your own practice, it's important that uh, universities and scientific organizations improve your method and it's very good and that um, in meanwhile a lot of uh, investigations show that the method is safe and successful. And so I have only a few 
investigations here to show you uh, this and you see this is a master thesis from Koch 2003. They show both methods low incidence of surgical complications, uh, post-operative surgical effects of feed intake on milk production are similar, comparison of abomasopex C with omentopex C. Um, another master thesis from ANOVA, um, 200 cows laparoscopic amosopex C without significant complications. Um, during the observation period of three years, uh, the culling rate did not differ to the affected cows and uh, good milk yield after surgery. Another master thesis from the University of Berlin no difference in, of recovery of milk yield, field intake, fertility survival rate within six months. Um, and if you start after an early diagnosis, you have a same good prognosis with a right-sided abomasum displacement with this method too. This study uh, Thorsten Seger will, will show you later and after beginning with the model, method we had some modifications later and one uh, in this investigation you can see from Professor Doll and Thorsten Seger the modifications we started in a few years, in the years after beginning with the method. In the beginning we started with this needle from Vares to create a pneumon peritoneum it was a very, um, you sometimes see it in, in, in pub because we published this in the beginning, but today we don't work with this needle. To create a pneumon peritoneum, we begin this, with this 5 millimeter magnetic valve trocar with an open tube. And we, we puncture the abdomen in this direction. In right to the left leg with, a, with the opened tube or it's possible if it's difficult in this position to do it in this direction and another problem in the beginning was this thread end after bringing in the toggle into the abomasum. If you brought the toggle into the abomasum and the abomasum is deflated and sank down, bring in this thread end completely. We started with this thread end out and then turned over the cow, but it's difficult then to find the thread end in the abdominal cavity, so every time bring in the thread end completely. <coughs> After deflating the abomasum. Okay. There are some other studies in USA and in Canada. I think we go on. Um, question. What do you think we need the one step or a two step laparoscopy? I think if you start with laparoscopy, it's better to begin with a two-step laparoscopy. If you are safe with this method, you can start with a one-step um, laparoscopy and lap one-step laparoscopy is usable in, in Denmark and in the Netherlands in a normal LDA, but you see we have a lot of cases we need a two-step method. So we have this 130 160, we have 160 cases a year, we need the two-step method. And this is the reason we in our practice work still with the two-step method. What's the benefit? Surgery in dorsal recumbency has a high diagnostic benefit. Um, 
and the st only standing cow is very low because we only see the liver as uh, the, the spleen and the rumen. Okay, <coughs> the duration is long enough. We, we need a farmer to help us to bring the cow and daughter recumbency, but we have a very interesting and important view. We see the uterus, the sacrum, liver, reticulum. We see ulcus, abomasi, reticular peritonitis, peritonisal. And daughter recumbency is very helpful for emptying the uterus. You have seen 60% of cows with, with DA uh, still uh, have uh, endometritis. Sometimes we use a situation for claw trimming if you work with the operation trailer. Surgery in daughter recumbency is necessary for the right displaced abomasum and the not displaced abomasum and if we perform a diagnostic laparoscopy. So we start with a situation of a not displaced or right displaced abomasum. This is a correct position of the abomasum on the bottom of the abdomen and now here you see a small beginning of a dilatation of the abomasum and now we have a dilatation and dislocation of the abomasum on the right side. And if we have only a dislocation and dila dilatation and dislocation on the right side, we see here back the pylorus in this position and this is a sign that we have no torsion or no volvulus of the abomasum. But it's difficult to decide this only with our phone endoscope. And if we get the torsion, then you will see that we have the torsion and volvulus and the pylorus is here now in this situation cranial. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem. If we fix this abomasum only blind with roll and tech, we will fix the abomasum twisted. So it's not useful to fix the right displaced abomasum with roll and tech. Now a cow in dorsal recumbency and I will show you the torsion of the abomasum. You see the abomasum will be covered by the net and now we have the beginning torsion and the pylorus in the beginning caudal is now cranial. And we mostly are standing on the right side of the cow, have a view over the top of the rumen and then see here the abomasum covered by net if he is twisted. We have see here the omasum and the beginning of the abomasum and here a little bit of the liver mostly but the most part of the abomasum is covered by net. I will show you this in a few video sequences. So, the procedure. If we have a not displaced or right displaced abomasum, we start in a, the same way, in a similar way. First we create a pneumonia peritoneum. On the left side, we do not create it on the right side, we do it on the left side too. We we'll bring in air and it's perhaps it's better to bring in not only the passive air in stream so we can inflate a little bit air and then we lay down the cow in dorsal recumbency. We do this with our operation trailer and now we have to decide the position of the abomasum. So we start with this first case. Can we have a little bit of light? Okay.
So we start in a situation of a not displaced abomasum. You see here the rumen and we are standing on the right side of the cow and now we see here the abomasum on the, uh, we are standing on the left side and now we see the abomasum, here's the liver, the omasum and the beginning here of the abomasum, the contraction, very nice contraction of the omasum often is seen here. And if we see these three structures, the liver, the omasum and the abomasum, we have no <coughs> volvulus um, of the abomasum. So if we will fix the not displaced abomasum, it is important to bring in the toggle directly in the lumen and it's often difficult to do this and so we, we take chains and insufflate the abomasum directly. And we do this with our toggle setting trucker. We puncture the abomasum near the omasum and insufflate air. We will do it later. And you will see you get a, a nice displaced abomasum. We create our abomasal displacement. But every in dorsal recumbency. Now you can, you can see the vessels and veins on the covered part of the net from the abomasum we have seen before on the standing cow. And now we can fix the abomasum and we fix it strong back in the cow near the other. And here you, you see the uh, Rubin contraction. And now you see the, the net covered part of the abomasum. Here's the beginning of the gray surface. And this is the correct position to fix the abomasum. So, and now we can bring in the toggle into the lumen and uh, can then deflate the abomasum. If you bring in now now air in the abomasum, it's difficult to fix it correct in the lumen. Perhaps we, we puncture the abomasum and the structure behind the abomasum. So before bring in the toggle in a not displaced abomasum, bring in a little bit air into the abomasum to, to get a correct position of the toggle in the lumen of the abomasum. Now we deflate the abomasum. and can remove our instruments. We can see the mark and if we, if we pull the thread end a little bit, you can see the toggle in the lumen of the abomasum. And you see here the omasum and we would, behind the omasum we would expect the liver. Now we have a contraction and now you can see the liver here in this direction. Yeah? It's the correct position of a not displaced abomasum. Okay, this is another case of abomasal displacement. We, we see the not displaced abomasum, but a strong dilated, dilatated abomasum, but not gas filled, but strongly fluid filled. And if the abomasum is strong fluid filled, it's not necessary to, to insufflate the abomasum. It's no problem to fix the abomasum in this position directly. So you can go in and you, we go 
back. The position is the beginning from the second to the third the fundus of the abomasum. If you start with abomasum pack C, you would, I think you would uh, try to fix it more cranial, but it's necessary to fix it very strong caudal here. It's very important. If you fix the abomasum more cranial and you bring the cow back on her legs, you will see that you have a lot of tension on your thread ends with a um, risk of peritonitis. So it's very important to fix it very strong caudal here in this position. Very important. Everyone starts with a method will fix the abomasum in this direction, more cranial, but it's very important to do it so wide, so back. Yeah? If you remove, you have a lot of fluid in it, and if you remove, uh, you see the, a little bit of uh, abomasum fluid um, here, and you, you have to, to pull it two or three times and then the mucosa will close here next to the thread end um, and we have no fl fluid, more fluid extreme in the abdomen. Now here you can see the correct position. Always check the correct position. So the abomasum, omasum and liver. Okay. So what will we see in abomasal volvulus and torsion? If you have a torsion, we, it's not possible to identify the abomasum. We have the same situation. We are standing on the left side of the cow and you see here the om abomasum covered by net and only Caudal, we see a part of the abomasum not covered by net, but if we go more cranial, um, we see we can't identify the omasum because its omasum is always covered by net too. So we have the covered omasum and abomasum in cases of torsion of the abomasum. And now we can go in and puncture the abomasum caudal and deflate the gas. Perhaps you know it from calves with tympanic calves. It's difficult to, to release the gas if a calf is tympanic. But if you bring the calf in dorsal recumbency, you can release the gas. And this is the same situation in a cow with a with a right displaced abomasum. If you try to release the gas, if the cow is standing, it's not possible to release the gas. But if you bring the cow in dorsal recumbency, it's very easy completely to release the gas out of, out of the abomasum. And this is necessary for a spontaneous <coughs> retorsion of the abomasum. So in the first step of this case, we only release the gas out of the abomasum and then brings the cow back on her legs again. And then we bring her back in the barn and give her an intravenous fluid therapy. Uh, you can give her 20 liters um, sodium chloride. Uh, it's okay, it's, it's a long time to, to control this. And so we in practice work with a high percentage solution of natrium chlor uh, sodium chloride, we, we work with a 7.5% solution we have in Germany since a few months. And then we have abomasum here on the right side, you have seen the liver, you can see the omasum and you can identify the net part of the abomasum with a strong blood vessels here and the beginning of the gray surface of the abomasum <coughs> and you can you have noon it's now possible to to bring in gas into the abomasum 
or directly to fix the abomasum if there is fluid in the abomasum. And now you can see the beginning of the pylorus part here of the, and the pylorus of the abomasum and we, we puncture and fix it and the, from the beginning from the second to the third part of the fundus of the abomasum and in this position we can bring in the toggle. We are very successful with this method, with this two-step method. Okay, it's necessary to do two um, abomaso, uh, two laparoscopy procedures, of course, and I think it's a method for a clinic. It's sometimes a little bit difficult to do this under field conditions, but it's very successful. Okay, after fixation, we can release the gas and can bring the cow back in, in the right position and then we fix the abomasum with the wound gas and bring the cow back on her legs. This is my college with uh, claw trimming and mostly a few hours after the first surgery we have um, normal fakers and we can see that the cows begins with feed intake and often we have a normal feed intake four or five hours bef after the first laparoscopy and uh, this is a sign that the abomasum is in the correct position but we wait 12 hours and then do the second surgery and fix it Perhaps it's not necessary to fix the abomasum, but we always lay down a second time and fix the abomasum. Okay, are there any questions? Yeah? And then the 8 millimeter. Why not the 8 okay. Um, the, the, if we puncture the abomasum, if we have a very strong dilate, dilatated abomasum, and we puncture the abomasum with the 8 millimeter trocar, we have, a, we have a so strong injury that the abomasum deflates very quick and sinks down, and it's, it's uh, gone, and we have to bring the cow in dorsal recumbency. If you take the 5 millimeter trocar, and puncture the abomasum, we have only a small injury and we, we remove it, this, this uh, hole in the abomasal wall will close and it will not sink down. Okay. And that, so we, we first start with a 5 mm trocar. Yeah. For a farmer, yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. But in the in the European situation, at time I know in Germany, in our region, in in northwest Germany, uh, the farmers start with roll and tech, but they will not buy an endoscope and start with endoscopy. Yeah, twenty years maybe under the situation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. So we, we, we lose so long time, also, so the, the insufflation with a various needle often uh, needs uh, five or ten minutes mm -hmm. and so with a five millimeter trocar only a few seconds. Mm -hmm. yeah. I, I also have, I do my uh, affirmation displacement uh, at the with the right flank uh, operation. Mm. I also had sometimes this very large uh, big uh, 
Yeah. But uh, I sometimes have a theory about this amazingly relapse is that uh, something I call a sort of uh, decompensating atomism, which doesn't contract anymore. And it, if it doesn't do that anymore, gas will fill it and it will be turned left or right side. And that's, uh, that's the reason I think of those very long um, fibrosis or how you call it, those strings. I, I think we have we we off, we sometimes see these long strings and and I think this occurs with a uh, with problems with the abomasum or with the, the whole lactation. So I think there have, there's a gas production in the abomasum, the whole lactation, and so we have a, a slowly lengthening on the, and the long string. Yeah. Yeah. Is, is there any experience? I I do also a lot of horsing and did a lot of colour courses, and there are some uh, similarities with the large colon. And Yes, we, we worked with constant mean yes. uh, several years, but the results were not uh, not successful. Then we worked with erythromycin. Yeah. Erythromycin is, is very helpful to for the emptying of the abomasum or omasum, but it's uh, only a, a short. Uh, you, and uh, if if we have problems with the emptying of the abomasum, and that we see often after a. Uh, right displaced abomasum, then we, we get the problem of uh, a functional stenosis and uh, often with a bad prognosis. Mm -hmm. uh. okay. No, no. M to one or the other. Uh, at time we we mostly work with a with a 7.5. It's a, it's done very very quick and and uh, cows drink water. Uh, they they directly start and and drink water. Uh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, when the cow is in the dorsal occupancy, we see in uh, some pictures that the entrance of the endoscope occurs uh, uh, in the right side. It's yeah. the same uh, side of the fixation point. Yeah. Is that um, wrong uh, or is there any differences uh, between the... No, you, you, are fr you are free to, to, uh, to choose uh, the position for the optical system. The, the position to fix the abomasum is clear, uh, but, but with the optical system you, you can choose how you want. Sometimes we have cases with reticular peritonitis and or, or we, we, we think that perhaps there is a reticular peritonitis and then we, we take the position more cranial to see better the, the part of the diaphragm. Okay. Okay. Thank you very much for the practical part. We are happy to start again. Okay, thank you for the preparation of the cow. Um, Thorsten Seger improved the diagnosis. We have a Good gas filled abomasum, uh, strongly dilatated and dislocated. So, it um, may be necessary to release a part of the gas out of the abomasum. We, we will try. So, we begin with a local 
and suicide behind the last rib. And in the 11th intercostal space, And now we <coughs> we have this knife. Um, I I at home take another knife with an another form. Oh, I have one here. I will <laughs> I show you the difference. We only need a, a very short incision, so I think it's easier to do is to perform it with this knife. Yeah. Okay, then we, the first is an incision directly behind the last rib. And the second position in the 11th or in the last intercostal space. If it's important to, to take this position uh, you cannot identify the, the end of the diaphragm. So if you go with this position more cranial, it may be that you puncture the lung, yeah? Okay, not too much cranial and not too much dorsal here. I think it's a, the projection of the lung is this direction, yeah? And you have to be behind the projection of the lung here. Okay. So if we have a very strong dilated and dislocated abomasum, it's difficult to to go in here with our toggle setting trocar to to reach the abomasum um, on the top. So it's better to release the part of the gas of the abomasum. And this we can do in the beginning of the puncture with this five millimeter trocar. And I puncture the abdomen and the abomasum. I've directly punctured the abomasum and I release the part of the gas. Yeah, it's the smell of the abomasum. And now I slowly remove the trocar, very slow. And now you hear the in-stream of air into the abdomen. Yeah, I removed the five millimeter trocar out of the abomasum and now it's free in the abdomen. And I remove the head of the trocar And we have a comfortable peri normal peritoneum in a few seconds. So now we remove the five millimeter trocar, change takes a eight millimeter trocar still with an open tube, so we have time that to slowly get more and more air into the ab abdomen. And now we have a first view, I hope, on the abomasum. And we see a left displaced Abomasum. We go cranial, see the spleen, the diaphragm. Sometimes you have a contr contraction of the rumen, 
but you see that we have particularly released gas, but the uh, abomasum, the hole in the abomasum is closed and it sinks not down completely. Yeah, you can do it with a volumen contraction. And now we can insert the toggle setting troca. Oops. Thank you. If I find the hole, there's my incision. There's my incision. And now under endoscopic control. I insert the toggle setting to car. And you see the, we are now on the top of the abomasum and puncture the abomasum directly on the top of the abomasum. And now we bring in the toggle. The room contraction. So we bring in the toggle into the lumen of the abomasum and now we complete, we can release the gas and the abomasum slowly will sink down. It's very helpful if we have a lumen contraction for the emptying. And if we have a very slow emptying, we can take our optical system between lumen and abomasum and help it a little bit. Now it sinks down. Now the toggle is in the lumen and we can bring in the thread and completely into the abdom abdominal cavity. Yeah, bring the ganz rein. The thread, is a, it's a very stiff thread, it's a supramid thread and it's um, non resorbable and it's very easy to find this sort of thread in the abdominal cavity. Okay. Good, this is the first part of the surgery and now we bring the cow in dorsal recumbency. Remove all instruments. So. <clears throat> Yeah. 
will das noch mal einmal kurz demonstrieren hier. Die Trokare, die Trokare haben hier am Ende so ganz kleine Löcher zum Lufteinstrom. Und das heißt, wenn ich den jetzt den Trokar jetzt direkt in den Ladwagen vorgeschoben habe, dann kann ich den Teil entgasen und wenn ich ihn jetzt langsam zurückziehe mit so einer ganz vorsichtig drehenden Bewegung, dann kommen irgendwann diese Löcher frei in die Bauchhöhle und lassen erstmal Luft in die Bauchhöhle einströmen und dann zischt das und dann auf einmal rutscht er mir ganz raus und ich bin in der freien Bauchhöhle und hat dann innerhalb von Sekunden. Aber ich will natürlich den Labenhagen, das kann ich machen, aber ich möchte ihn bitte einmal punktieren. Deshalb beim Eingehen in die Bauchhöhle auch immer nur stechen und nicht stochern. Also es ist kein Schweizer Käse, also nicht, dass der Labmang nachher durchlöchert wird. Also wirklich nur einmal eingehen, wenn ich ihn dann punktiere, den Labmang, ist das kein Problem. Dann entweicht nur ein Teil des Gases, aber nicht fünfmal rein und raus, ne, um zu gucken, ab wann bin ich jetzt endlich richtig. Das ist natürlich klar. Und wie gesagt, wir machen das mit dem Fünfer, nicht mit dem Achtertrokar, weil dann doch äh, Labmang Flüssigkeit ausritt und so viel Gas rausgeht, dass der Labmang nach unten wegsaust. Ne? Was habe ich? Nö. Wenn man Labmagen Ultra hat und Geschwüre des Labmagens hat, das gibt es manchmal, die schon durchgebrochen sind. Krühe, die also chronisch irgendwo gekränkelt haben, bis man festgestellt hat, das ist eine Labmagenverlagerung. Dann ist manchmal, dass Labmagengeschwüre durchgebrochen sind, der Labmagen an der linken Bauchwand angewachsen ist. Wenn man dann reinschaut, sieht man das in der Regel nicht. Sondern das passiert eigentlich immer dann, dann bringe ich den Toggle ein, entgase den Labmagen und habe Probleme und kriege ihn nicht runter. Er bleibt mir so auf halber Höhe hängen. Ich denke mal, warum will der Blödmann nicht runter? Und dann irgendwann gibt man es auf und legt die Kuh auf den, Kuh auf den Rücken und dann sehe ich es eigentlich. Dann habe ich meistens in Rückenlage sehe ich die Peritonitis-Erscheinung auf der linken Seite. Aber zumindest sehe ich, dass der Labmagen sich nicht nach rechts zurückverlagert hat, sondern er liegt weiter links. Und ich sehe nichts vom Faden, weil natürlich der Labmagen festhält und der Faden natürlich, der Labmagen natürlich auf dem Faden drauf sitzt. Das sind, ja, haben wir schon vier, fünf Fälle im Jahr, wo sowas so ist, die dann einfach zwei Tage nach dem Eingriff zum Schlachten geschickt werden. Ja. Also das sieht man also häufiger. Es ist eigentlich erstaunlich, dass so Kühe, die durch diese fibrinösen Typ, die kapseln ja alles dermaßen schnell ab, dass sich das wirklich schließt und äh, dass sie keine generalisierte Peritonitis entwickeln, selbst wenn so ein äh, labmagen ulkus durchbricht. Ne. Okay. Um, we <lacht> ich darf das auch Deutsch, oder? Ja. Nein, ich sage, wir finden manchmal Labmagen Ulcera, Ulcus um Abomasi, und die dann durchgebrochen sind und dann ist der Labmagen an der linken Bauchwand angewachsen. Und wenn wir dann reinschauen, dann sehen wir das in der Regel nicht. Wir bringen den Toggle ein und versuchen ihn zu entgasen. Nur er sinkt dann nicht nach ventral ab, sondern er bleibt auf halber Höhe stehen. Und dann gebe ich das irgendwann auf und lege die Kuh auf den Rücken. Aber dann sehe ich halt häufig die peritonitischen Erscheinungen ventral mehr. Und der Labmagen bleibt links. Er verlagert sich nicht durch das Drehen auf die rechte Seite zurück. Und den Faden sehe ich nicht, weil der Labmagen natürlich den Faden bedeckt in Rückenlage. Die schicke ich dann einen Tag später oder zwei Tage später zum Schlachten. Also es, wir haben das auch mal versucht, dann so Tiere per Laparotomie den Labmagen zu lösen, aber in der Regel geht sowas ja doch schief, das bringt ja nichts. Ja. Nicht so viel zählt, weil man sieht gar nicht, wo man sticht. Also ich mache jetzt alt. Nein, wir machen jetzt folgendes. Ich mache mir jetzt erst die Löcher. Die sind nämlich so, diese Gefäße, die will ich nämlich auch nicht unbedingt haben. Okay, now we... 
We lay down the cow in dorsal recumbency. If we work with a trailer, we, sh we mostly stay on the left side of the cow. If we work without trailer, we usually sh stay on the right side of the cow. So the position for the optical system is today here in this position on the left side. If we work without trailer, mostly we insert the optic on the right side of the cow. But you are free with the position for the optic. We bring in the trocar. Um, take a little bit care of the blood vessels and the vena subcutanea abdomina. Now we insert the endoscope and have changed to explorate the, the abdominal cavity. We directly see the thread end and we, we go in direction of the, to, to identify the not displaced abomasum. You see the triangle here with the liver. We have a very nice con fraction here of the abomasum and we see the of is a construction of the omasum yeah and we see here the abomasum and here covered parts of the secum and the rumen And now we bring in the dissector <coughs> to grip the thread. Okay. Yeah, I. Here's a ligam. Here you can see the ligamentum teres. I I I grip it. It's a ligamentum teres from the umbilicus. To the liver, yeah? Okay. So I take the thread end again and remove it. I pull it out. But uh, once, no, it's important to show you something. Please, can we uh, dark a little bit? If you if you fix a not displaced abomasum, you would try to fix it cranial, more cranial near the liver, near the omasum. But if you see, we we brought in the toggle in the top of the abomasum and you will see the, the thread end is very strong caudal here in the abomasum. But you can also see that it's very difficult to fix the abomasum if it's not displaced in this position. How to fix it here, how to bring in the toggle safe into the lumen of the abomasum. So I think it's, it's important to bring in firstly gas into the abomasum and then bring in the toggle, yeah? Okay. So now we remove the optic and we remove the head of the eight millimeter trocar.
and we release the passive the air. So before we, we before we fix, we fix the um, abomasum near the abdominal wall, we bring the cow back in in the left position uh, because of the tension of the abomasum. We have a part of fluid in the abomasum, and if we will will take the abomasum to the abdominal wall here in dorsal recumbency, uh, it needs more power here to bring it high in this position. So we first bring her back on the left side. Yeah? Okay. Dann da einmal hoch. Ah, ich kann das schon mal abschauen von innen. So we, we take our thread ends, pierce the root gas, and I can show you here that we have fixed the abomasum, at, and the abomasum lies directly near the abdominal wall without tension. Here's the black mark on the thread end, yeah? And this is a five millimeter, a five centimeter next to the toggle is a black mark. So we are, the abomasum, I do nothing and the abomasum is directly here and the black mark. And that's important for the prognosis and the outcome. Yeah, that is without tension. Now I can, uh, I can knot it. I let uh, them a little bit play, uh, perhaps one centimeter for possible wound swelling. Yeah, but only one centimeter. And then we bring back the cow on her legs and we, we improve the tension on the wound gas, yeah, okay. So re wound gas we, we remove after three weeks, not earlier, yeah? Okay, good. Can we alles runter machen? Yeah, it's better.
Go. Nehmen wir ganz runter. Ich kann mir noch ein bisschen. Moment mal, nichts. Vielleicht äh, jetzt gleich wieder, wenn der Wunschspray noch mal drauf kommt. kommt da auch. Gut. Okay. So ist schön. Ja. Gut. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope everybody is back from the practical section. We do a little bit more theory and I like to introduce uh, Dr. Thorsten Seger from the hospital here in Gießen. He is um, assistant surgeon here in the house and he did his master's thesis especially on uh, laparoscopic abomasal repositioning and uh, therefore I like to introduce him for his speech now after our practical part. Please, Dr. Say. Thank you, Dr. Fritz, dear colleagues. Uh, during the next few minutes, I want to show you the results of two different studies uh, on uh, laparoscopic abomasopexy we performed here in Gießen at our clinic during the last years. Uh, we started with laparoscopic abomasopexy here in Gießen in 1999, and I think we were the first university. Uh, uh, which uh, performed this new method. And uh, we knew, uh, as uh, Dr. Janowitz uh, had told before, that the experiences under field conditions uh, with this method um, are very well uh, and described by Dr. Janowitz, Dr. van Leuven uh, from the Netherlands, Dr. Christiansen and uh, Dr. Barizani uh, from Italy. And uh, the experiences are a, a quick and easy performance of the surgery. Complications uh, observed only in rare cases. Uh, also relapses were observed only in rare cases. And uh, they observed a fast increase of foot intake after surgery. And also uh, a high milk needed alpha surgery. And, uh, and that's a uh, uh, um, very important point, a high satisfaction of the farmers. But uh, if you want to get really hard data about a new uh, treatment method, uh, you have to perform a controlled clinical trial. And this is what we have done here in Gießen from 2000 to 2002. And uh, we uh, uh, included in this uh, controlled clinical trial uh, 120 cows with left displaced apomasum. And we had uh, uh, different inclusion criteria and also exclusion criteria. Uh, for example, concurrent diseases, severe mastitis or endometritis or claw problems. Uh, after including a patient, we uh, performed a non-blocked randomization uh, for assignment uh, of this uh, special animal to one of the both treatment groups. Uh, 60 animals were in the study group uh, and the surgery was a Janowitz method and also 60 cows were in the control group and uh, there we performed a right flank laparotomy with omentopexy. We performed also a hard standardized surgical approach in this study. After surgery, uh, the animal stayed for another five days at the clinic here. And during this period, 
we performed a clinical examination twice daily, uh, controlled feeding, uh, the documentation of the milk yield, and uh, we also performed examinations of blood samples. We did also uh, a standardized treatment of complications uh, and uh, concurrent disorders here uh, during this period. After that, uh, uh, we uh, made a follow-up examination of the animals um, at the farm six weeks and six months after surgery. So, the results of this controlled clinical trial were that only in one cow with adhesions of the apomasum caused by an uh, ulcer, uh, the laparoscopic treatment was not successful. Uh, the, average, uh, the average operation time of the laparoscopic apomasopexy was significantly shorter than uh, the uh, during of the uh, laparotomy with omentopexy. We observed no relapses or complications based on the surgical treatment after dismissal in both groups. And six months after surgery, uh, the laparoscopic treatment had the same success rate as the laparotomy. It was 88.3% versus 90%. More results, uh, post-operative complications during the period at the hospital. We observed two cases of uh, uh, myositis at the site of the uh, uh, omentopexy uh, after laparotomy. And we observed uh, two cases of uh, peritonitis and three cases of uh, myositis at the omentopexy site in this group, but all these cases uh, could be healed with uh, treatment by antibiotics. We also observed two relapses in the study group, but both cases uh, were caused by an early loss of the apomasopexy suture and a second laparoscopic surgery was successful. The milk yield and the food intake uh, increased uh, significant better after surgery in the study group. So here you can see that uh, the milk yield, the intake of concentrates and also the intake of roughage was much more better after surgery uh, after uh, the <coughs> laparoscopic treatment. We also uh, had significant uh, differences between both groups uh, concerning uh, uh, liver uh, laboratory data. Uh, total bilirubin concentration uh, decreased significantly better after laparoscopic treatment, and also the GLDH activity decreased significantly uh, better. The discussion of these results. Uh, the laparoscopic treatment uh, is, uh, uh, has the advantages of a faster performance of the surgery. Um, it's a well suitable technique, independent of the degree of abomasal displacement and the degree of rumen filling, and that's uh, 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 different to the sterner Grumer method. We had a faster increase of foot intake and milk yield after surgery and a faster recovery of the liver function compared to the laparotomy. And also six months after the surgery, we had a very high success rate. <coughs> Some disadvantages of this method, special instruments are necessary uh, with uh, higher costs. Um, we have no success in cases of uh, apomasal adhesions. Uh, complications at the site of the omasopexy uh, are possible, but only in rare cases and uh, uh, um, are uh, good to handle by antibiotic treatment. Relapses short time after surgery uh, due to the early loss of the apomasopexy suture are possible, 
uh, but concerning relapses one year after surgery or later, uh, we need long-term studies with more patients. So that we have done uh, uh, after this first study and we included over 500 cows treated here at the clinic uh, by laparoscopic surgery and uh, we treated these cows uh, in a period of uh, between 1999 and 2003. Uh, the age, the average age at time of laparoscopic surgery was 5.3 years and uh, you can see the control population it's nearly the same uh, period. Results of the study, the average survival period after laparoscopic surgery uh, was 18.4 uh, months and uh, the average age of, at time of culling uh, was 5.3 years. And in the controlled population, it was 5.7 years, so that's not a different. And also the results, uh, the reasons, sorry, the reasons uh, why the, these cows uh, were culled uh, were nearly the same uh, like in the control population. Until now we uh, observed 23 relapses, relapses uh, in 22 uh, uh, different cows. Uh, after laparoscopic surgery, uh, more relapses to the left side than to the right side. So the rate of relapse was 5.2%. And this rate uh, is nearly on the same level as under field conditions uh, told by uh, Dr. Janowitz or uh, Dr. van Leuven. Also the average age at time of culling and the reasons for culling in cows treated by laparoscopic surgery uh, are the same than in the control population. And now I'm finished and thank you for listening. I think uh, uh, the intake of energy uh, was higher because the, the, the foot intake increased uh, uh, much uh, more better after surgery and uh, uh, I think the reason for this uh, was uh, the point that uh, uh, we had uh, uh, not so much pain directly after surgery the first few days uh, and uh, with a higher uh, intake of energy, uh, the liver function uh, will be uh, uh, better uh, after a short time. So the difference in phase, uh, post yeah. Phase. yeah. Okay. In field practice, which is something uh, I always adore. And therefore, he is now team in the speaker list and he will introduce you to an additional technique invented by Chris Janssen. And therefore, thank you, Evert, okay. for this speech and thank you for being with us. Okay, what, what time do you fix <laughs> about for lunch? <laughs> because it's... Our lunch is not so important. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, let's get started. <laughs> uh, Dr. Fritz, thank you for your kind introduction. Also, uh, University of Gießen, thank you for being here again. I think it will take 40 minutes, 45 minutes for this presentation. I'm a dairy vet in the western, eastern part of the Netherlands. We worked with a total of 
30 vets, five partners. Uh, we are not all round anymore. It's divided in uh, cattle work, pet animals, swine and horses. And this year I re reached the age of 50. Because I'm always nervous and to change the languages, I've got some jokes at the start, the men of the year. It's originally it was from Germany, but it was translated <laughs> for this workshop in English. The best man of the year and place number three is this, this man. <laughs> There's a second one also. <laughs> and there's a winner. And there's this guy. <laughs> and that brings me uh, to my hobby. This is Bud Branchens, world famous. I've got the same bike, but I'm not as fast. This is my hobby, mountain biking in the area where I live <laughs> around the cows. But take care, as you can see, this is Mr. Van Leeuwen with a broken shoulder. And that takes uh, one year, but I'm still strong and on the bike again. <laughs> this is the, the outline, a short introduction, the surgical procedure, and I will uh, concentrate on the one-step uh, method. I will talk about some results and there will be a summary. It's an overview and helicopter view in 10 years, fixed into 40 minutes, but, so I cannot tell all the details, but I think there's enough room for discussion. As you can see, we started in 1998, and we started with the two-step method from Dr. Janowicz. Um, it went on for almost six years, and then in 2004 we changed to the standing procedure. And as you can see, we are hardly do any other type of operation. Sometimes during the weekends or in the night, some of the vets operate on the Utrecht way. Uh, there's one farmer, he says, oh, I only want to roll and toggle. And there was a new smart vet. He said, OK, I will take this <laughs> on the right side. But the basic procedure is now the standing laparoscopy. And the price of operation, perhaps good for you to know, it's uh, at this level. And it's excluding the uh, medicines, it's just uh, for the operation. These are some data from the Netherlands. It's not data from our practice, but there's a central database from the breeding company. And some farmers that are in the, in the, um, in the system, they bring in the operations and they bring in also the type of operation. As you can see, there were six cows. It's 1% out of these were done on the two-step. The one step is 21%, roll and toggling is at this level, the Utrecht way is on this level, and the Hanover method is on this level. And we didn't raise hands this morning, but what is, if I ask you, um, we go around the clock, the, the two-step procedure, is anybody famous yet with the two-step procedure in this area, no? Uh, one, uh, raise hands, is there anybody started already with the standing procedure? No? Uh, this is the roll and toggling. Is it a standard procedure in your practice? Who is rolling and toggling in this audience? Okay. Any one, two, three, four? Yes. And then we go to the Utrecht method. This, this is from Österreich. Okay. <laughs> this is, and then the Hanover method. Okay. Now, well, that's all uh, you can do. Uh, what I found out in, in doing trainings and talking to vets and talking to farmers, we have to think about the value of the cow, the cost of the treatment, the success rates. We, we talk about technical possibilities. Cows have a lot of eudema under, under, their, um, under their belly. It's more difficult to do laparoscopy. Um, it depends on the skills of the surgeon, which is a learning curve. The more you do, the more experience you get. And what I found out in going around, there is a tradition in practice. And it can be the oldest vet or it can be the youngest vet. He say, okay, most of the time it's the oldest vet. Okay, we say we do this treatment and we're not going to change. But um, I think in a group practice, and group practices are getting bigger and bigger, we have to talk about change management. We have to discuss uh, change management and you can do it on a yin or yang or you can there's an outline how you should change your, your procedures. But what I found out, if you start, you go, go around in this curve. You start and you are very happy. Then it goes down. Then you, there's some doubt. You think, oh, I never should have started laparoscopy. There's 
certainly a dip, but all the, all the vets I spoke, the dip, it comes up, and in, in the end you are confident and happy again. So if soon as you start, whatever you do, I think Heinz will recognize this. I think you've, yet, you've had your failures as well. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, we go on. This is, uh, uh, Heinz Janowitz has told a lot about this procedure. We did 500 of these operations and the results were similar to, uh, to your results. Now we're going to concentrate on the one-step procedure and I must say we are quite happy not to bring the animal and dorsal recumbency. In Holland it is impossible to go around with these cars because of the swine fever and also the foot and mouth disease. And the, the, the cows always stay on the farm. And I think it's a small country and as soon as one practice in an area starts on doing laparoscopy and you say, and, and the neighbors, they hear about the laparoscopy, the neighbors also tend to start on laparoscopy. So in Janowitz, a lot of cows are brought in from 50 to 80 kilometers to his practice, but this is not in the Netherlands. So we have to operate on the farm, and as you can see, and the video was uh, super, I think, it is a hard work, you need more labor to bring the cause of cows and dogs of recumbency. So we started to work on the one-step procedure, and it took a flight. More practices in the Netherlands started to doing the standing procedure. Again, I think we can be proud on two practitioners. Uh, Heinz was also a practitioner, and these are also two practitioners, one in Germany that was Dr. Christiansen and Cristiano Barizani in Italy. They, um, in the field practice, they worked out the standing procedure. You need a special applicator that will be shown later. It was Christiansen in Germany, Barizani in, in Italy. Um, in the standing procedure, we always give a small sedation. I don't like to be kicked by cows, and so you, you start with a small sedation. Um, the areas are almost the same, but in practice we found out we go more to the last intercostal area. There are some videos where you can see you, you puncture the uh, diaphragm, and we don't want to puncture the diaphragm, and we can work on this place. This is the outline of the positions. The various needles is gone, that's told more and more today. Um, this is the original light source with the air pump because in the uh, two-step procedure you need a bulb of air to have an helicopter view into the uh, abdomen. But in the standing procedure you don't need any more the air. Also the, the light source was a fiber light cable which is a very strong light source but it is replaced to portable lights, lit light uh, sources and they are uh, more comfortable in the field because you, do, you can operate wherever you want. You don't need any power from, your, from the farm. Uh, it's the same, the same as the start with Heinz. You look at the degree of displacement, you look at the condition, you look at adhesions, or even if there are ulcers. There was a question, that if we see ulcers, we directly throw away our material, we open the cow, and a lot of ulcers, you can take them away with your hands, and I think that's the one procedure you can, you can get, a, get a success um, when there are adhesions. But sometimes the adhesions are so strong and you go in and you push open the epomasum and then you have to kill the cow. Um, certainly, the farmer wants to look inside. It's a, with, I think the, the videos we saw, in the, it's lovely to see. It's one of the most, uh, I still, I'm working 12 years now, but I still love it. <laughs> the side inside, and the farmer, will, he will have to pay, but he will love it, he'll love it as well. He has to pay, but he will certainly tell his wife, his neighbors, <laughs> and his kids. <laughs> He's still one of his best cows inside. <laughs> this is the toggle. Today there are two marks, and yeah, well, I'll fix it here, just between. The length is uh, inches, but I think it's 80 or one, one meter. This is uh, Heinz again. You, in the visual control, you place the toggle. That's exactly the same as in the two-step. We found out if you've seen the live video, you fix it at the top. And certainly don't go at this area. We found out in practice this area is quite close to the pyloric part. I think it's only 20 centimeter. So we tend to fix at the top or even more to this part because here there the room of the this is too close to the pyloric part. 
the toggle is placed, you've seen it, the air can go down. And this is from Barizani. It is a small video. And well, we've seen the live video. The air goes down. Here's some local irritation, some per local peritonitis irritation. This cow perhaps you should treat with antibiotics. Depends on the fever. And then it goes down and then you're <coughs> finished. It's quite essential, certainly on the standing procedure, to get as much air out of the epomasium as, as possible. Because as long as there is a bulb of air on the left side, in the standing procedure, it's very difficult to, to, to bring the epomasium. I think it's called like fishing. You have to, you feel the fish and you have to bring the fish to the other side. And is there, if there is too much air in the epomasium, you have to push too hard. There's too much power on the epomasium and I think that's the worst thing for the prognosis. So bring out as much as air as possible. And in the live demonstration, perhaps I will show, sometimes we push to the abdominal wall and you push and then you push and then the air comes more out. And this is also, and you, you see the, the omentum, the fat in the omentum. And here the, uh, this. I have to wait. Doesn't pick up, no. No, well, it's a video sequence. You can see it. again the, the uh, here the, um, the omentum and the epomasum and the black marks you can see. So you know you are. I try one more. No, it's not going to work. Okay, we see it live. This is the turning point in the, in the essential uh, point of working on the standing procedure. As you can see, there's a long applicator. We don't bring in the toggle. You leave the toggle wire outside the cow and you fix the toggle wire at the tip of this applicator. This is the quincher. So this is one of the vets in our practice. It's a slightly smaller too, but we, you can see the live operation this afternoon. This is the tip of the applicator. So we fix the toggle straightly to the tip of the applicator, leave the knot a little bit behind the tip because of the resistance to bring these knots to the skin. The skin will go in front of your needle, so you bring down the, the knot a little bit to the back. And before you go in with your applicator, you look, the, the sharp point is inside the applicator. Here we go in, this is another, um, Hans Janowicz doesn't place this trocar, but we place this trocar to go in with this applicator. It's a, it's a bigger hole, I think it's 12 millimeter, and then we go in with the toggle wire, with the fixed toggle wire at the, at the tip of the applicator, and then we go in, and you go straight in to the apple main. You, you have a look at the position, and here you can see, it should start, yeah, there we are. This is from Barizani, and you can see uh, in a few seconds that the applicator comes in, and you have to look what you are doing. Don't bring the applicator into the, in the fat or in the abdo, ep, uh, or in the rumen, or you don't place it at the, um, at the omentum, just, just place it behind, between the epomasum and the abdominal the ribs. Yeah, there it comes, and then you can see if you go straight, then you've got a false fixation. There's the fat, and there you place the applicator. I think it's quite clear. You're coming with the applicator, you have a look at the epomasum, and place the applicator, and then you're fine. Okay, this is how it looks, the spleen again, the ribs, and the rumen. And then we fix also at the same place uh, on the navel, or just a hand breath uh, on the left or on the right and in front of the navel. As soon as the uh, applicator is inside the abdomen, you, you see and you look at the tip of your applicator, and you can feel and see the tip of the applicator and you don't have to hit the needle. I first started to hit the needle, but it's better just push and you push and then you're through and then it's, and the needle comes out, there's the wire and you fix it. Again, the black 
two black uh, marks, a small tension, and then you're fine. And you leave it there for two or three weeks. And this, uh, you can see Barizani also operated a nice boo. <laughs> <laughs> Postoperative care. One of the lady vets in our practice, you introduced the, the nose tubing of cows. Is anybody doing nose tubing here? No? Uh, it was a changing point in my life again. <laughs> Lovely, they don't start chewing your tubes uh, it's, and you can bring in whatever you want, fluid and no antibiotics. First the roughage, propylene glycol is postoperative care. The corticosteroids, vitamin B12, glucose, when you can bring in one or two. Now we, we, we two bottles of glucose into the ab uh, abdomen. There's an article, I think it's it's in Belgium from 1991. Because of the uh, glucose in the, apple, apple, uh, in the abdominal wall, it's not kicked out of the kidneys as fast as if you do it intravenous. So no, is it a standard procedure? We bring, throw it in the abdomen now. And we drench the cow with fluids or propylene. Now we talk about results. Uh, it's more or less exactly the same like Heinz, in the first time you, you ha will have some lovely views inside the rumen, but it's not a problem at all if you have any doubt after punching the rumen. Uh, do you advise antibiotics or? No. no. <coughs> I think it's not a, 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 a big problem. Insufflation under the peritoneum is a, a, during the learning curve. As, as soon as you've done five operations, this is over. You can, I never in 12 years punctured the spleen. The pearl cavity I never opened. The LD, yeah, this is, this is, um, the LDA has disappeared before the toggle is placed. You are quite relaxed. You want to show the farmer the epomasum, the epomasum sinks down and down and down and it's gone and the toggle is not inside. That certainly during the learning curve, you will forget. I must say your training video, you were quite relaxed. You were walking around and I, <laughs> <laughs> I thought, Keep your finger up the tip of the, uh, of the toggle placing record because of the air not going on, place the toggle and then you can show the farmer. <laughs> you can have bleedings. I've never had a, a dead cow, but it, it, the, the bleedings can be massive. Certainly if the, in the standing cow you can see the blood vessels, but in, um, when, with the two-step procedure, if they are under dorsal recumbency, you don't see the blood vessels. But also with a stitch, it's never a problem. Um, the two-step procedure you have, sometimes it, is, it can be difficult to find the toggle. And I think the first year I, during lunch I phoned to Heinz and I said I couldn't find the toggle. I said just relax, go in next day and you will find it. And the next day we found uh, this place and the, the toggle at the top and then we were okay. Um, broken toggle wires when passing the skin, this is what, what I showed, you leave the knot, not a, a, a uh, just at a tip, just a not a bit back from the tip of your applicator because of the resistance by passing the skin and then the, the toggle wires could be broken. But we've never, I think the broken wires we've had seen for two years, not anymore. In the standing procedure, it can be very difficult to fix the epomasum on the right side of the, from the median. And if it is not possible, don't force and don't force your applicator to the right side, just, just fix on the left side. I've heard vets, uh, they, they fixed the epomasum uh, on 80% on the left side. In very big cows, or if, it's, if it is too difficult to fix on the right side. I think the normal position, certainly in the second part of the gestation, or the epomasum should be on the right, in the right do, uh, uh, side of the epome, uh, abdomen. But in practice, it is not a problem to fix on the left side. Uh, this is the percentage of success rate. What is success? Yeah, I think success is if they live uh, two weeks after surgery. <laughs> That's, uh, the gauze bin is it's exactly the same like Heinz. I think there are some strong data published already and the, Heinz has shown also a lot of data. This is from uh, Italy. Two cows died. Uh, you find some local peritonitis, traumatic peritonitis. I think the results are are, are certainly good. This is an uh, interactive people I'm in contact with. Um, 
we collect some data and we discuss by internet and they say, okay, we, we, what, if, what is your opinion about the results? Uh, the last practice that is these, these guys from Denmark is a large practice, 23 vets, I think 11 or 12 vets doing dairy work and everybody has his own set. <laughs> so that's a very, ex uh, and they never worked on this two-step procedure. They started straight on the standing procedure. I think Heinz said perhaps it's good to have more experience. I think the videos from Heinz were on a very, very high level to know exactly what's going into the apple maze in the dorsal recumbency and see the apple maze in the liver. Uh, that's a, quite a high standard. But these guys never had these high standards. They wor worked straight on with the standing procedures and the farmers and the, the practice is very um, happy with this procedure. Um, this is the finger in the air, but we calculate on this area. One of the things, the, the question this morning, they, they said, can we do something with uh, erythromycin or can we do some with antibiotics or neostechmine? I think the longer you wait, the, lo the, the worse the results. The results, your results will go down. As soon as there is an LDA operate, and don't wait two or three days, the longer you wait, the more fed into the liver, uh, they will not pick up the roughage and the cows are more at risk to die. So, I know practice, they, they use a drastic drug to to keep the apple maze moving and the other practices they use a relaxation drug on the, to keep the apple maze relaxing but to, uh, I think it was 20 years ago I st one practice we, we used neostigmin and the other practice used buscopan it's a uh, re relaxation but in the end we found out you are happy for one or two days and the farmer calls in two days later can you operate the cow again and then the prognosis will be not so good the recurrence is at this level and I think it's excellent work from Thorsten Zeger. And the longer we look, the more we will find. It is known that whatever type of operation you do, it, the uh, adhesions, the body has the, ten has the tendency to, relieve, to, to, to get rid of these fixations. And a lot of apomasums will be uh, not fixed after operations one or two or three, three years later. But these recurrence levels are, I think, very low. And the success in two weeks, certainly 90% will live. And this is the same article uh, um, Heinz showed. And I must say, yeah, this 700 cows and 400 were done by farmers and 300 by vets. This were 70 operations by five vets and they are not, the learning curve for operation in, in America, they haven't got any learning curve and the, the cows died is dramatic high, a lot of high of recurrence rate, and the survival is, is really, I think it's not excellent. And this is the Jean-Philippe Roy in Canada, and they worked on 152, and these levels are, are quite good, and this is the operation that are also good. Perhaps it's a type of cow in America, you cannot uh, exchange all these results, but I'm sure this, uh, the, the role in toggling is still, uh, it's, it's a, well, I'm, I'm not favored, you can feel uh, about rolling and toggling because I think the results in the end are not so super. Are we always successful? No. We have some disasters. <laughs> there are some cows that die. <laughs> cows die. Everybody's standing around, oh, you're the brilliant vet and you bring a new, a new laparoscopy and now the cow is dead. What should we do? Well. Complications, I think some phlegmona under the skin, which is not a apple maisel fusillae I've never seen in laparoscopy, but is, uh, they are described for recurrence, we discussed. Disco the stenosis appearance is quite uh, a difficult one. I think perhaps the um, persistent ligamentum teres, I think if we make a false fixation um, around the ligamentum teres, you get a stenosis appearance in the cow because you I think the applicator is on the, on the wrong side of the ligamentum teres and there's a blocking of your apomasum. That's one of the guesses, I think. Uh, as soon as there is a stenosis appearance, the next day or, uh, we cut away the fixation. And a lot of cows get a release after taking away the fixation. But be sharp to yourself and also tell your farmers that the cows should eat or the, there should be um, feces. If there is a stenosis appearance and you should train your farmers um, 
make a phone call if, it, if, he, if he's not feeling too comfortable and take away the fixation. Um, also stenosis appearance, I think when the hair is too much on the left side in the epomesum and you try with a lot of pressure to, to bring the epomesum to the other side, you don't have the, the, the optimal feeling of a fish coming in to the other side. And if you don't have the feeling of the fish coming to the other side, you just leave the cow, uh, clean away the stuff, and wait for 10 minutes or 40, uh, a quarter of an hour. And a lot of fluid is going out of the epomesum and the air is going out, and in 10 minutes you can make a, a comfortable fixation. So that's one of the things, don't fix too, snow, too fast. The peritonitis is also what Heinz discussed. The toggle cuts the abdominal wall, but we've we've had a lot of of lot of I think two or two or four percent recurrences, and the recurrences you never see any ab, ab, uh, uh, generalized peritonitis. There's a small uh, fibrin on the top of the epomesum, but the, also Dustin Sager, the, these two recurrences were successfully operated the second laparoscopy, and that's what we found in practice as well. But in, uh, sometimes it's not local, and then I think these cases are lethal. And it's, that's uh, one of the failures related to the standing procedure. We, because it's still, we make a hole in the epomesum and uh, there can be some leakage. But the percentage is, I think it's very low. Well, the summary. I think we still have a maximum control of placing the toggle. All kinds of even non-displaced epomesums can be operated. Understanding and well, no extra manpower is needed. I think the farmers and also the vets and certainly the larger farmers, they will like it. Uh, I think the learning curve is still very, very fast. We've, got a, we've had a lot of new vets coming in. I've done a lot of tra <coughs> trainings in other practices. The learning curve is uh, very fast. The results on the standing are as good as invasive surgery and I have to be honest, I think the two-step pr uh, procedure is a, a little bit better because of the, the shuffling of the epomesum and the, the air getting out fully of the epomesum and a reset of the epomesum. I think the two-step is on the golden standard uh, for the laparoscopy. It takes a little bit more time versus roll and suture. It's very fast, but I think the difference between 10 minutes uh, or we, we operate, I think, average for the standing procedure uh, between half an hour and an hour, but I don't think 10 minutes is important. The, the, the results are important. You have to have satisfied clients, satisfied cows, and uh, Thorsten said, okay, the laparoscopy is 11.7 minutes shorter than Dirksen method. I think that's nuisance. That's, there's no, no way to talk about time. There are some higher costs, but we are, we are very happy with the solid materials of Dr. Fritz. He only sold one set and the set is still <laughs> in use. So uh, it's very strong material. Yeah, but we've done with one set more than 1,000 operations and we renewed one tokar, I think in one, one of the scopes, sometimes it, they fall on the floor and if you are not lucky, it's the first time it's broken, but we've had no broken scope, but the scope could be delivered and could be renewed. They bring in new lenses and it's not, because the scope is one of the most in, uh, expensive parts. But it's higher cost, but certainly it's worth the money. In the standing procedure, it's certainly, we cannot inspect the abdominal wall, and that's a disadvantage, certainly. Take home message to tell your wife, kids, or other vets at home. <laughs> <laughs> Laparoscopy, also in standing animals is possible. It's good for the cow, the farmer, and the vet. Investments will give returns. Uh, it will give you certainly job satisfaction. Um, thanks to all these guys I'm, we are talking to. Think out of the box. <laughs> these are trained to, to, lay, <laughs> to lay the other position so you don't have to big big boxes. Think out of the box and start on laparoscopy. This is Dr. Barizani. <laughs> And uh, you've seen this, it was 15 or 29 January. It's always fun and thank you for listening.
connection right now after, <laughs> and in connection with the introduction, you can ask him the questions okay. in the surgery room. Okay. So we immediately move to the surgery room before lunch. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I can leave this on. Yeah. Yep. Yes, certainly. Yes, we make a peritoneum. Ah, this is more for a human doctor, I think. <laughs> Not for a, a few practice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. Yep. Oh, Okay, then now we're going to start the stadium procedure. Um, uh, this I asked Thorsten Zeger to give uh, half a millimeter of xylazine because of uh, not being kicked by the cow. She's, uh, and we, she's still standing with half a mil of xylazine. And she's uh, a bit more quiet. You can see this is uh, a highly filled, ep displaced epomason. You can see the bulb here. This is the rumen. It goes up and down. And I will make uh, a local anesthetic here. And we don't fix it here. But this is the last intercostal area. And don't make the incision too high because your applicator has to come to the other side. So some, we may make an incision here. And also some vets make a, a second incision at this position to make it more easier to bring your applicator to the other side. But in our practice, we only make one incision at this area. Is, it, is the area clean already? Yep. Okay. Now, we will, I will wait for the Silas in. Okay, thank you. This is the place for the for the scope to get in. And I think here is twenty mil, it's quite a lot. But perhaps I think in an hour I only lose uh, two and a half mil of <laughs> local anesthetic. And also here. Okay. Uh, the incision knife, we've got also a not blade 22, but a blade number 11, because it's a stitch incision and not a... Uh, um, so, have you got the other one? Go oh, out. Uh. Um, the extra rip you can feel here, you go a little bit more behind the rib, and in case in your, during your learning curve, if you are not sure to get into the ep uh, abdominal abdomen, we clean this area, make a local anesthetic here, and we make a dorsal caudal position of your first trochar, because the rumen is here, and you never will puncture the epomasum or any other organ, and then you go in here. But as you can see, the rumen is, is turning over and over, and you wait for the rumen turning, and this is the very high displaced epomasum, 
and I will go straight in to the dorsal cranial position. Do you want to put it on? Yes, please. In, in practice, yeah, I think we don't use it, but uh, this is the. Have you got the other applicator from Christiansen as well? No? Ah. Okay. Yeah. Okay, it's the same like Heinz. This this is a small incision, and this is a bit bigger because we have to bring in the um, trocar to pass the Christiansen applicator. This, this is a, a little bit bigger. Well, no problem. Yes. Again, the five millimeter trocar. Um, yeah, yeah, I installed about going in with the straight into the apple mason and the apple mason sinks down. I will, I make it most of the time this way. Feel your finger, you just push it in front. And also the, you should hear the air going in. No. And now you, This is a quite big, so I think I'll do it the way, like Heinz. Now we change the position, we go straight into the apple mason. Okay, now, and at a certain moment there is a turning point. Now goes air in, and at a certain moment the air, it, the this direction is to the other side. It's not optimal because this is a live demonstration. <laughs> yeah, I can hear the. Normally, here's a, a magnet valve inside, and we don't use the magnet valve, and the air has to go there. But well, I think. I will try now with the endoscope. You can hear the, the air go inside now. Thank you. Mm. Ah, this is, uh, you can see this is fat, so this is not what we want. And normally if the, the, your screen is not optimal, you tip against the rumen. And this is, this is between the, um, the muscles and the fat, so the position is not all right. And I didn't pump in air, but if you should bring in air, then there's a problem. So we go out again. Um, um, I need the big oil. Oh Ah, 
I don't know. I don't know if he's. Okay, this is what we want. You can see the ep this place, the Epomazum also, the spleen in front. There, the ribs on the left. And the top of the Epomazum, here is the omentum on the right side with a lot of fat in it. And you see the the movement and so yeah there's the place of the puncture you see okay well now we're gonna um, okay uh, the bigger Trocar. This is the bigger trocar from. Uh, this is in between the ribs, and this goes here. And then I go in and try to do it at under visual control. Yes. Yeah. Here, you see. There it, there it comes. <laughs> right. And if the epomasum is too big, you don't take care with this applic um, this this to car and don't go into the, straight into the epomasum. But now it's all right. You take this out. And now we are going to place the toggle. Assist me with the toggle, please. Yeah, you take this and also. Most of the times I, I ask the farmers to take the toggle and you stay on the left. Um, there's the tip. This is, this is the fat. Um, here is in the front of the spleen and the, I think if you pull it a bit more to the back. Um, now you can see this is the top of the epomasum and I just turn here at the edge of the omentum and, I, and then you puncture and now it's inside. You take out the mandarin, I, I put on my finger, yes? Because otherwise, otherwise the epomasum sinks down. Now the toggle is inside, and it goes down. And you can hear the fluid and the air getting out of the epomasum. Just wait and you want as much as air out as possible to make the second step more easy. And there's a lot of fat in the, uh, the omentum. Possible, but we didn't pump in any air, so.
Okay. Now we leave it now. Right. There's fluid. So yeah, this is a a tear. I don't. I'm not sure if this from the. It, it looks fresh, so it's, perhaps it's from the operation. And there is the toggle. And there's the place for the rumen function. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Okay, now we leave it this way. Sorry? AXA insurance. Sure. Yes. <laughs> ah, she will be all right. Now we um, arrange the applicator. And this is one of the first versions of the applicator. And this is bended. And this is not quite solid. We prefer a more solid version because then you have more possibilities to reach the other side and without any bending in it. Only the tip should be bended. So um, I think Christiansen, he preferred this uh, bended uh, version, but we prefer the more solid uh, straight version. So what I can do is do this, <laughs> make it straight, but I will try to work today with this, this system. One of the arms you make a little bit shorter, so you are sure the knot is not at the tip of the applicator. If you can hold the applicator, please. Okay, you, you fix the toggle wire at the top. That's right, the alcoholic, please again. And also for the, uh, here on the, I'll take this. Also the wire in the top. And you go down, very good. Okay, now the tip is inside. Here the tip is inside, so there's no sharp uh, point outside the applicator. And you bring this in. Right. And this is the bended version, so you take it like this, then we bring in the scope. As you can see, the epomasum is fully gone now. I could see it on the toggle wire. There was a tendency the toggle wire should disappear into the, ab the abdomen. So it's disappeared completely. The only thing I can do now is, yeah, but it's, a, it's a curved version. Normally, I will try to Um, the tip, there's the tip. Just wait for the rumen again. Um, there. And also in practice, if you have any doubt, just use your common sense and know if you go in with this applicator, you know the bended curve of this applicator, there's only the rumen and you keep in touch with the abdominal wall you don't have to do the visual control. If there's enough air and the human is low, then you can do the visual control, but now you just use your common sense. That's the work of the xylosin. Okay. Yeah.
What I can do, yeah, you can switch on the light now. I don't think you, you will reach the... What I can do is just leave the applicator without any force. And as you see, it sinks down. And I can see it is in this area here. And it goes down quite easy. And because of the bending, it's, it's, it's to the other side. Can you feel the discomfort on the... Can you see the... I don't think you... No. There. And this is the, this is the tokar, and inside the tokar is the applicator. This is quite a dirty cow. On the other side. Well, I'm in an optimal position at the left side now. You can feel the tip there. I can try to push it to the other side with a small... Well... Okay, I think I'm quite happy now. Just turn the applicator to be... Um, okay. And now I just don't hit the, the, the start to push. And then she can kick. Okay. Now this is this is quite from optimal because of the because it is not straight and I'm not used to use with the bended version. If the bended version, if I start to push, then it goes that that direction. So that's not what I want. Ja, aber wenn ich das drehe, dann... Ja, da werde ich versuchen, aber dann geht es hoch. Und dann komme ich zu weit hier. Ja, wir try. Ja. Ja. Hier zwei. Kein Dirt. Okay. Jetzt kann das raus. Ja. Das kriegen. Okay. Ah, you can see the information is gone. I've got a toggle wire under just a hand breath left the navel and just in front of the navel and the only thing I have to do is now just pull the apomasum like a fish to the bottom and you fix it with the moolbinde. I have to do the moolbinde and... Oh yeah.
Okay. I can feel the the epomasum like a fish, and it's uh, it is a, a bit tension, so I can leave it. Uh, wait, I've seen the black mark, so you know the black marks are close to the place where you fix it. So, and if you see the black marks I, and there's not too much tension, I'm fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Just waiting for the final fixation, but I think it's fine. That's it. Okay. And for the last, uh, we take out these um, the trocar and uh, first uh, we take out this this one. And then you take away this. And you you push out as much air as possible because if the cow lays down and the air is inside the abdo ab uh, abdomen, it can get under the skin here. And also Heinz, he didn't put any suture on these places. Uh, sometimes I use the spare pieces of the spare part of this and bring it here. <laughs> but that's the only only close. I close this, and then these two, you leave them open. We yep. Will, we will close it in the stable. You will close it in the stable. Okay. I see we'll be fine, because you see the Roman is working already. The epomase was disappeared completely. You see the black marks, and you found to Thorsten Zeker how this co will survive. Last year, it was number 13 was not optimal, but she survived excellent. <laughs> and for me, it's very difficult to work with this applicator. I, I don't know if you sell this, still, you sell this version or? No. no. <laughs> <laughs> you should not let me work with this one. <laughs> and if you've seen the, the Barizani uh, applicator, it was a very strong, solid applicator. And if you go in with the strong, solid applicator, it's quite easy to move the room the, uh, to the other side. And you can get far more easy to the other side. And now, if you push, it starts to get under the skin and it doesn't pass through. And yeah, this is not optimal. I think we should change the curve. Yep. Any questions? And as you've, as you've seen in the field uh, as, a, as a demonstration, Perhaps because I'm a bit nervous to get into ab the ab uh, abdomen. Normally it's a, it's a finger spitching gefühl. Da geht man rein und dann hört man die Luft rein und dann ist das fertig. Aber and it was quite strong for Heinz to go to the back and then you are sure there's no organ or no epomasum. Even if the epomasum was blocked or was, uh, there was uh, fixed to the ab abdominal wall, then we should have seen it and then we should have been well again. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Fritz. Dear colleagues, um, to complete your impression of the endoscopic method in bovines, we just wanted to show you a little bit of endoscopy in small ruminants. Um, as you all know, there's a broad field of application for endoscopy. 
You know, so you can do bronchoscopy uh, for further diagnostics in respiratory diseases. You can do lavage or biopsy sampling. If you have animals with arthrosis, then you can do an arthroscopy and try to remove bone sequestra or just get an in view into the joints. In laparoscopy, you can do biopsy sampling of the spleen or the liver, for example. And of course, then you can try and at the end do an endoscopically assisted insertion of a balloon catheter into the urinary bladder in urolithiasis. Urolithiasis is mainly caused by a feed associated imbalance of calcium to phosphate. Um, a reduced water intake leads to a precipitation of indissoluble salts and to the formation of salt crystals and urinary stones. These stones lead to an obturation of the urethra at the known anatomically preformed localizations, and these are the pelvic flexure, the flexura sigmoidea, the apex of the penis, and the processus urethrae. The clinical signs, I think you are all used to them. The ramps stand in a sawbuck like posture with the legs to the front and to the back. They are unsuccessfully pressing for urine and often they can only urinate in little drops and the owners often mix the state up with pressing for feces. Um, the pain they have, they just can show in teeth grinding and uh, uh, elevated tension of the abdominal wall. The prepuce orifice always stays dry and if you examine the blood, then you can see an elevated urea and creatinine value. And if the disease is ongoing, then you can find a uroperitoneum <laughs> and sometimes the animals are already in a circulatory shock. For further diagnostics, you have to put the ram into an upright position and then you can move the penis out of the prepuce and you can check uh, the processus urethrae and that's the most common position where the stones get stuck and the processus gets necrotic. The therapy can be done conservatively or surgically. If the owner asks for a conservative therapy, then you can amputate the processus and try to probe the, the urethra and sometimes you can even remove little stones out of the urethra uh, with your probe. The surgical methods are the multiplication of the urinary bladder, uh, constitution of a perianal urine fistula or laparotomy with thystotomy. Today we want only to show the endoscopically assisted method and the balloon catheter I will show you later on. Um, in small ruminants, it's very important to know a bit about sedation and anesthesia because they react very sensitive to the administration of alpha-2 sympathomimetica. You have to weigh your patients very correct and the dosage of xylosin in small ruminants is for sedation 0.05 to 0.1 milligrams per kilogram. And for anesthesia, you can pre-medicate goats with 0.05 to 0.1 milligrams and sheep with 0.1 to 0.2 milligrams. The introduction to the anesthesia is then uh, done by an administration of ketamine. And if you have the possibility to do an inhalation anesthesia, then you should use isofluran and uh, add a local anesthesia because there's no pain-killing component in isofluran. So the preparation for your surgery is just the normal way you have to shave and disinfect your surgical area. And you need a straight laparoscope just uh, like for the Janowitz <coughs> method, a light source, an insufflation pump, and camera and monitor. What we use is then the pigtail catheter from Rüsch. It's called a supraflex um, set with a splitting trocker. And I wanted just to, to show you and pass it around. 
that's the, that's the splitting catheter, uh, the trocar, and here the pigtail catheter. So just want to have a look. So the laparoscopic surgery, you have to do two incisions into the skin. One is here paramedianly and approximately one hand left from the pupils. That's your uh, incision for the optics. And here the caudal one is for um, insertion of the catheter. Your incision is about one centimeter, maybe a bit smaller. And then you can administer a pneumoperitoneum. There we use the varus cannula. And um, you can then implant an eight millimeters a magnetic valve trocar for your laparoscope here. And then you can start searching for the urinary bladder. Sometimes it's a bit, it's a bit um, difficult to find the bladder. Then you should try and lift the tail of the, of the ram up to an angle about 20 to 45 degrees so that the intestine can move to the front um, and then you have a clear view onto the bladder. What you should take in mind, uh, keep in mind is that you have a depression of breathing then because the intestine presses onto the lungs. Um, if you see the bladder clearly, then you can try to implant the balloon catheter. So here I've, I've brought a video, it's, it might be a bit dark, but I hope it works. So here you can, you can see the, the bladder here. It's quite hemorrhagic and you have fibrin on the surface of the bladder. Here's an endoscopic forceps to get hold of the bladder. Here's a quite uh, clear uroperitoneum. And at this side, you will just see in a few seconds, I hope, uh, the trucker for the catheter. And with the forceps, you can bring uh, the bladder near to the abdominal wall. So here, here's the trocar. Don't, don't worry about uh, these structures. This is hair. Um, this, this animal was dead. So we were just... <laughs> <laughs> We were just practicing. <laughs> so the trucker is, is in the bladder now. And then you can block the balloon. You should use about eight to 10 milliliters of fluids to block the, the balloon of the catheter. So then you can remove the trucker. And here you can see the catheter coming out of the bladder. Okay, and then you can pull the bladder near to the abdominal wall. So just the next one, because this one was in a patient, still alive, at least at the time of the operation. So, so. so here you can see a tensed bladder, very large, a little bit of uroperitoneum. And if you want to take endoscopic forceps in a very tense bladder, then you should try to, to pre-empty it a little bit. And here you can try the, the toggle insertion trocar from the Janovic set, just to let a bit, little bit of urine out of the bladder. That will take a while, and then you have enough um, tissue that you can grip with the forceps. because otherwise you just will slip over the surface. So that's on, on the other side. You can then insert the trocar for your forceps. So 
That's what I meant. So uh, it's just too full. So now when you get when you get hold of the bladder, then you can remove the first forker. There will come a bit of urine out of this um, puncture side here, but you try then to insert the catheter at this point, and then you can just pull, very similar to the, to the toggle, just pull it near to the wall of the, of the urinary bladder, and then it will stop. So here's the trucker again, and just try to get this side. So you can see if you if you pull it a little bit then it stops. After the operation you should uh, do a post operative medication with antibiotics and analgetics or spasmoanalgetics. The antibiotics not because of your operation your surgery, <coughs> but um, you have the catheter in, inside of the bladder and just to, uh, to keep um, infections out. So um, to, to de-swell the urinary pathways, you can administer corticoids um, and to, um, to enforce um, urinary urination, then you can give uh, furosemide and add infusion of sodium chloride and you should take care of the catheter after the operation. So two days after your surgery, you should flush the catheter the first time. Um, with fluids, you can take the sodium chloride, um, but it should be warm. Because if you, if you imagine that you get cold liquids into your bladder, it wouldn't be very nice. So the success rate of this method, I just looked for the um, patient load of uh, the last year. It was in 2009. We had 26 patients with urolithiasis and we could dismiss 15 of them and send them back home. And that means a success rate of 57.7%. Uh, and up today, we had eight patients in this year could dismiss five of them. That means a rate of 62.5%, so about 60%. But we have one problem. We don't know what happens at home. So probably the success rate is a bit smaller. So for prophylaxis, um, you should give feeding advice. Um, animal owners shouldn't feed uh, a lot of concentrates and they shouldn't give their animals stale bread. And the aim of feeding is a um, calcium to phosphate ratio of 2.5 to 1. And you should ensure a sufficient um, water intake. And this water should be of drinking water quality. If you want to enhance water intake, then you can administer sodium chloride to the ration. And the acidification of the urine can be tried by a feeding of ammonium chloride. So the take-home message of this presentation is that urolithiasis uh, or rams with urolithiasis are emergency patients. Um, it is often mistaken with a constipation. And what you uh, should take home with you, um, it's suitable for application in the field because you have not uh, long-lasting uh, surgery,
but laparoscopic surgery and it lasts for about 20 to 30 minutes. Um, catheter care is necessary, but maybe the owner can try to do this. And the main thing is that we need a skilled feeding advice. So that's uh, my last one here. Um, that's Emil, and I think he's on his way back home. So this was the last one we had here, and I thank you for your attention. Um, yeah. up, up to today we didn't do a, a, a comparison between the two methods, but uh, it is planned, so it will come. Can you tell me how long should the catheter stay at this, this position? Well, normally we have it in for about two weeks, but it can be up to four or five weeks. We just, we just flush the catheter and uh, check if the, if the fluid that we put in comes out the normal way. And if it works, then we just uh, close the catheter and um, check if the animal can urinate normally. And then we can take it out. Normally we stop after about two weeks. So I'd just like to show and to explain you the complete set for abomasal repositioning in the field. And everything is nowadays in a plastic case and all parts fit nicely in. The most important parts are and also at the same time most expensive parts uh, is the actually scope and the light source. The scope is a 8 millimeter scope, 8 millimeter in diameter and it is specially made for the large animal field because it's very robust and sometimes my heartbeat gets quicker when I see how the practitioners uh, use this as a breaking stick but somehow it survives, which is a good sign. Uh, so please take this, have a look through. At the same time, uh, we have a new type of light source which is a LED light source in field practice, this is absolutely enough. For use with video cameras like we do today or like we did today, this is naturally not enough. But for the field practice, it's fine. This one is a light source. It has an accumulator or a rechargeable battery in it and it has a charger facility in it and it's just screwed on top of the scope and that's all you need. You switch it on and off by pressing at the button here. I just pass it, have a look through please, and pass it to the next one. So these two parts are the main um, costly parts, but usually they last longer than we as company would have loved it. <laughs> <laughs> The next important parts are the special trocars. Uh, as Dr. Janowitz says, he starts with a 5 mm diameter trocar. 5 mm means the inner diameter of this trocar. Uh, a trocar usually consists out of two parts, the trocar only and the cannula. The cannula 
is equipped with a magnetic wealth inside. Magnetic means it's kept inside and closes by magnetic power. And the good thing about it, it has no other mechanical parts in it except this magnetic flap valve and it's very easy to clean. Sometimes it's good for us as a company because some people lose this, but unfortunately a little penny out of your uh, wallet will also help in uh, emergency cases, so it's very easy to replace. The little silicon cover is somehow semi-disposable, you can autoclave it, but by pushing the sharp end of this stroker only through it, you get little cuts and so you will lose air. So sometimes you just remove these little covers. So that's all. Please note also that the tip of this stroker has a special sharpness. You don't realize this when you use it because it's nice and smooth uh, to use but when it's getting blunt, then you will feel it, that it's really tough to cut through the trocar or to push through the trocar through the cattle uh, tissue. So please have a close look to it as well. And from this side, the 8 millimeter trocar, which is fitting closely to the scope. Please make sure that you sometimes oil with silicon oil or silicon grease this stopcock for insufflation. The next part is the toggle placing trocar. It consists, it's a little set, consists, this set consists out of three parts, a sharp trocar also with a special tip, the cannula without valve and the suture pushing part which is naturally just as long as the cannula so that you are absolutely sure that this trocar or this uh, toggle which you pushed through is really in the abomasal. So I also will fit We'll pass this to you. Yeah. In addition, for grabbing the suture, we have a suture grasping forceps. It's autoclavable, so even it's a plastic grip. So, and it's only to dismantle into two parts nowadays. And it's easy to clean. You just put a silicon tube on top of this and a syringe and you can flush it from the inside completely. The mounting is also very easy. You just put this on top. That's easy also to mount. Uh, make sure that when you mount it that this part is upside down, otherwise it will not work after mounting. But you realize quickly and the second mounting approach will be successful. We have an additional hook in the set which is just for that case that you lose or that you destroy the second uh, suture grasping forceps or the first suture grasping forceps so with this little hook, you can either use for palpation, but also to grab in an emergency case your uh, suture. There are also some practitioners for the standing procedures who choose another way of, uh, for placing the uh, speaker. And for those procedures, they also like to hook one, the suture to the first incision. So it's a little bit complicated theoretically to explain, but practically I can, we can discuss later on. That this hook 
is also in the set automatically. There is a puncture needle in it. If the uh, abomasal displacement, uh, the abomasum is too full, but as, as you have seen, the Heinz Janowitz dish did uh, puncture the abomasum automatically from the beginning so that the abomasum is not too full. So this is only used seldom. For the fixation of the abomasum, you need the special toggle system. Please note, it's a double string, double suture system, and it is worth the money because you need the double suture. You also need a system which is strong enough. When you compare the cheap American toggles on the market or other cheap toggles, you rotate them five times and then the suture cuts itself off. When you manufacture the toggles yourself and you think you save some money, you will realize at the hole you will also get whatever you do cutting edges. And when you're not at these cutting edges and your toggle needs the strength after one day, two days, three days, you will automatically cut your self-made toggle system. So please be aware of this. It's not just the name safety toggle. It is really a good toggle quality and look at it closely. It's worth to use it. And it's also important that you see it's long enough, eight centimeters, and all the ends are rounded. You need much more time to manufacture this yourself. <laughs> it's not worth the money. <laughs> so, last but not least, the toggle placing, uh, the Christiansen speaker. We manufactured it in several versions, but nowadays one version has left. It's the tough one, because most of the surgeons like it in a tough way. But with the time, you should be aware that you can bend this as you like it. It's no problem, and the tube is tough enough, and you can rebend it as well. So you can shape it as you like it. It consists out of four parts, one inner tube with the lancet, and the lancet fits automatically into the disinfection or autoclaving box, and it can be replaced as a single part if the lancet tip is not sharp enough anymore. Uh, please be aware when you pass it through, the edge of uh, the eye of the neighbor is in danger because the tip of the lancet is very sharp. And due to wishes from Denmark, we have put two holes in the lancet. But somehow, so in, we integrated it automatically in the manufacturing process, so it's equipped with two holes at the end. But still, I'm not quite sure what the second hole does. But the second hole is the, the ring in the knot. So the knot is in the second hole. How oh, they not inside the hole? In the hole, and then the resistance by passing the skin is not that much as the, as the knot is outside the hole. OK. Thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> Naturally, in the system, you have cleaning brushes. You have also a sterilizing box, but it's not a conventional sterilizing box because a sterilizing box usually has hole in the bottom and holes in the tip, uh, in the top, in the lid. And this box is closed at the bottom part. 
So you can use this as a disinfection tray. A normal uh, autoclaving box you cannot use as a disinfection tray. This is intentionally made, it's not by accident, you know, so please be aware the disinfection tray or autoclaving box is specially made to use it as a fluid disinfection box. And it fits naturally by its length automatically in, it, uh, in a normal autoclaving system, in a normal autoclave, which is 40, 41 centimeters in depth. And the last row car, which is used for the Christiansen speaker, is the 13 millimeter row car. Please have also a look to this one. It has no valve. It's not needed for the standing only procedure. So these parts are automatically included in the sets. And there is no need to, to change the set. There might be some reason one day to add a biopsy forceps or something like that. Also included is a cleaning brush for the long speaker system. So this is all. If you have additional questions for the equipment, please now or a little bit later when we can talk separately. And then I would like to invite you for the next practical period after the next coffee. Uh, we will do the next cow uh, non-displaced abomasum replacement. Yep, a repositioning of a non-displaced one. Okay, this was it. Thank you very much. We do a incision only one centimeter. Take our five millimeter throw car with an opened tube. Insert. Remove. And here's a passive instrument of air where you remove the head of the throw car and have a plumber peritoneum in a few seconds. If you have placed enough around the, the throw car, we remove and insert the 8 millimeter. And we can check the displacement of the abomasum. Perhaps. Sometimes there is a drop of fluid on the lens and we have no picture. And we, we short drop the, the optic on the room wall and then we, we have a clear picture again. And you see the, the spleen and you see nothing. Okay? Abomasum not displaced, so we, we turn the cow. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. 
So meanwhile, we are in the afternoon, and every one of you should be able to identify the abomasum. Um, in the video, I, I showed you the structures, and it, I think it's a perfect cow. This, this is a perfect cow. Beginning here as the surface of the net covered the uh, rumen. And now we go on the right side, and we see this triangle, I say always. This is a foramen omaso abomasicum. So we have on the right side, we have the omasum. On the left side, in direction to the back, he has an abomasum. And if we go on, we see a part Oops, here a part of the liver. Yeah. Okay, to bring in the toggle, we would usually think to bring in the toggle in this part of the abomasum, but if we do this, we choose the wrong position next here to the umbilicus. If we will fix the toggle in this position of the abomasum, we have to fix it near the last rib, near the sternum. Yes, so it's important to fix the abomasum caudal near this position. I think we, we take chance to have a look in the abomasum if you want, and then later we will insufflate the abomasum and bring in the toggle. Yeah, if you went, if you want, please come down and have a look into the cow. Man sieht schon, dass der Ladmann mal verlagert war, denn er ist ja schon ziemlich groß. Ne? Das ist schon mal auffällig. Also er ist dilatiert, ja. Der ist schon sehr dilatiert. Der hat ja nun von so die Motorik funktioniert ganz gut. Der ist schön kontrahiert. Man konnte diese Querfurchen ja sehen, aber der ist schon sehr groß. Genau, ich die Optik hier ungefähr vielleicht, sodass ich diese beiden parallel habe und wird auf der anderen Seite stehen. Ja. Ne? Genau. Ich muss immer aufpassen, dass ich die Milchader, Vena cutanea mhm. abdominis, die läuft ja hier bei dieser Kuh, ja. aber das sieht man irgendwo schon. Wenn man sich das ein bisschen rasiert, sieht man eigentlich den Gefäßverlauf. Ja. Ne? Das ist nicht sinnvoll, dann den, diesen Gefäßverlauf bei der stehenden Kuh zu kennzeichnen? Bringt ja, das, das kann man machen, klar. Also, Okay, now we have a contraction of the omasum and we will puncture the abomasum and insufflate it to bring the toggle safety into the loom of the abomasum. We go on with the toggle setting trocar. schon an? Mhm, können wir anmachen. We work with a with a light source with integrated pump, but we have different kinds of of pumps to insufflate the abomasum. Sometimes as a contraction of the rumen.
And I have punctured the abomasum near the omasum. And if we would... If we would insert the toggle in this position, we, we would take the fixation point direct, directly near the sternum, but we usually fix it near the umbilicus, so we have to, to bring in the toggle more caudal in this part of the abomasum. And here you can see the net covered part and the gray part, and we bring in the toggle in the gray part of the Abomasum. Okay, I think we remove it and fix the abomasum. Ah, we we still wait. Next, so I brauche ganz schnell den Toggle gleich. Na, nicht drin. Okay. Now we release the gas again. Okay. Gut. 
the hammer. Okay, good. Then we remove the optical system and remove the head of the troca. Thorsten, ist, habt ihr den gerade dahinter weggeholt schon? Gut, da kam sie zurück. Darf ich die beiden mal vor sich? Danke. Okay. Einmal dran fassen. Gut. Okay. Okay. Any questions? Ja. 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 Until the seven months is no problem to do it in the same situation. We sometimes do it in the in the eight months, 
but uh, the last three weeks before calving, it, I think it's a little bit difficult because the uh, fixation point we cannot use because of the, the position of the calf. And these positions, we, we bring in the toggle more cranial and do a fixation directly behind the sternum. Yeah. But we have never a problem with the torsio uteri. No, I. You didn't pump in air in the cow, but you were very. No, no. I, I, I have. There's a no, no. It is only the passive in, influence here. No. In a few practices, if you don't have this uh, turning table, it's very difficult to do an operation on the not displaced operation because you need more air and because the feeding area is very strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, uh, Yeah, if I have a problem and I have, can, cannot visualize uh, the abomasum correctly, then I, I have to, to insufflate air into the abdomen. Yeah. So I, I have the, the pump here in, in position with a, to insufflate the abomasum or to insufflate the abdomen. Yeah. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, it may be an advantage to to take the procedure once a procedure in, in high pregnant cows. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Thank you. Um, one more time. Again, this is a mildly deflated, dislocated epomasum. The rumen, and I think you can see the epomasum as well. Okay, you you open the valve, and you can wait for the room. Now the rumen starts to turn. Again, the problem. <laughs> I thought I was lucky. The, the camera should be away in the microphone as well. But Can feel the room. Okay. Yep. Ja, da gibt es die Verlagerung. Nicht so groß wie die andere. Und mild. Soll ich mal versuchen. Ja. Ähm, 
This is the edge, there is the omentum. This is the mus muscular part. And you, yeah, you can look where I'm in. Don't too far to this side, there's the omentum. More to the left, and as you can see on this positioning, this is more or less at the top. Yeah, well, I'm not used to work with cameras, so normally in practice I try to fix. Well, we, we take it off. Uh, this is a camera. Ah, well, it's I, think we, I think we will be all right. Okay, there it is inside. Yeah. Take it out. Yeah, you can, you can smell and hear the sound. Look, okay. Okay. Yep. You can see perfectly the edge of the uh, momentum and also the, the curvature of Mayo. And you see the Roman is working. And it sinks down. And if it doesn't sink enough, you push here with your hands of your knee. then the fluid starts, it stops, there's a blockage very fast. <coughs> yep. You cannot say the, inf the uh, inside lumen, uh, the, the pH, the, it's acid fluid, but it's not a sterile fluid. Uh, you, you can culture, uh, I heard, some bacterial things, but in practice we think, uh, uh, also the Janowitz two steps method, we always puncture the epomasum, but in practice it's not a problem. Now we, and you can see it goes down, it goes in. We cut, a, cut this off, make one leg of the uh, Y is a little bit shorter. There's another tip and tricks. Now I bring in a new knot here at the top because as soon as this, one of these legs will, will break down, uh, down the cow, as long as there is a knot, a new knot here a little bit higher, like this. Now you know if, if the, this wire cuts down, you've got one leg, but you go higher, higher, and you come out on, on two legs again. That's a small trick. Uh, yes, the better, the better, the better one. Okay, the alcohol perhaps. Yeah, I we put it here on the. Yeah. Okay, so explain you. Yeah. Ich mache das zu Hause immer so, aber das ist ja mehr Show, dann das ist etwas zu. Aber das gehört dazu, ja. Da werden wir versuchen. Da haben wir. Ich denke, es ist fett.
this is very, uh, it certainly depends on the fill of the rumen and the type of the cow. If you are able to look at the positioning of the, uh, the trocar and the applicator. Um, the thing I do, I go back and then you just, is it? Where is the? Can you? Ah well, I just brought it a little bit higher. Bring it to the abdominal wall, and don't force, and just let it go down by itself. And then you, I can see it here. And then you go down. And, and you, shoot, you, you know you're all right now, it kicks on the left. And if you are in a good position, then it starts to kick on the right. <laughs> yes, I'm still in contact with the tip of the applicator. And now I'm on the right side. Position. This is more solid. I just give the small turn. Don't hit the needle. Just push. And now it kicks on the right side. So let's do the skin. Do you have a forceps or? Now we go down to the bottom. Here there are two needles, so you don't have to. And you go down, you bring in the wire, and then you can fix. Okay, right. I don't know the, the crunching of the cow. We, we, it happens more, but I don't know the meaning of the crunching. Okay. Okay, now I try to, to pull the, the apple mason as a fish. And I must say I, there's very much power on the, on the fish now. We can have a look if the apple mason has disappeared, yes or no? Okay. Okay. All right. It's all right. I can see the black marks now. Sometimes, uh, last week I did an operation and there was too much tension. And I had a look at the displaced apple mason. I saw a, a bulb of air still on the left side. And I took in the toggle uh, placing tocar again, took away the bulb of air. And then the, the uh, apple mason came like an optimal fish to the other side. But uh, I've seen the black marks, so that's only in five centimeters, I know I'm fine. So I can make a final fixation now. Yep. OK. 
Okay. Very good. We take out this. Uh, the room is quite full. There's not so much air. Okay. And this hole is a bit bigger, and we close if the spare part of this we bring in here, and then we leave this one open. Okay.